How's it going, folks? Welcome to what is sure to be another fun at-home table read tonight. Uh, you know what? Screw it. I'm calling it now. We are going to be doing a reading for the upcoming uh, Best Animated Picture winner, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This movie rocked. I loved this thing. I cannot wait to see what Beyond is going to look like. But we're going to do a reading right here, right now of uh, part two. Uh, so let's jump right into introducing ourselves. Hello, I'm George, and I'll be doing the action description. I'm Curtis. I'm going to be playing Miles Morales. I'm Nicole. I'll be Gwen Stacy. I'm Kevin. I'll be Miguel O'Hara. I'm Logan. I'm going to be the spot. I'm Jessica. I'll be Rio. I'm Eric. I'll be Hobie and Jeff. And I'm Travis playing Pavadir. So close, Travis. Oh. It's okay. We'll have other people to help pronounce it during the thing. All right, George, take us away. All right. This is Whack a Mole, aka Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, written by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller and Dave Callahan, based on the collective work of thousands of writers and artists over the last 60 or so years. Epigraphs. We'd better welcome young people to this world. Before long, we will ask them to save it. Blaise Pascal. Never say you are unloved. I love you. In all the simplicity of the word, never say you have no friend. How dare you feel that way? I am your unknown friend. How long before you know? Sun Ra. Burn the scrolls. RJ. A person is a universe. Over black. Let's do things differently this time. Like so differently. On Miles, or rather a photo of him tucked into the bass drum of the Mary Janes. We see the drum vibrating. Someone is hitting it really hard, but we don't hear that yet. His name is Miles Morales. Gwen Stacy hitting those drums like it would even make a difference. He was bitten by a radioactive spider. Flashback panels are inset on screen. Miles and Gwen bumping into each other at Visions. Miles getting bit. And he's not the only one. Gwen getting bit. He hasn't always had it easy. Miles watching his uncle Aaron die. Miles' dad, Jeff, unwittingly pulling a gun on his own son. And he's not the only one. Gwen's dad, George, pulls a gun on Gwen. And now he's on his own. Gwen and Miles say goodbye. And he's not the only one. On Gwen, falling away from Miles until she disappears. You think you know the rest. You don't. I thought I knew the rest, but I didn't. Flashes of a frightening future as the drumbeat gets faster, louder, more intense. I didn't want to hurt him, but I did. And he's not the only one. Gwen! Gwen! Yo! Def Leppard! Interior high school gym, dead. At Kelsey, New York of Earth-65, Gwen's dimension. In the middle of band practice for the Mary Janes. MJ, Glory, and Betty stare blankly at their bandmate. Is the song over? Seems over. Are you okay? Ugh, here we go. You, you don't hang out? You don't want to talk? I didn't join a band just so I could talk about my feelings. Well, I did. I joined it so I could hit my feelings with sticks. Gwen hits the drums. Glory deadens the cymbal with her hands. If you don't want to, if you don't tell someone what's going on, you're going to snap. I'm fine. That's not how someone who's fine would say that. They say, I'm great. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. Thanks. Gwen knocks over the drum kit. So punk, right? How are you? And storms off stage. Why? When... Gwen, come on. I don't get you, man. You're right. Gwen slams through the double doors. Peace. Betty breaks the ice. I play drums. Exterior Chelsea Day. Gwen walks against the foot traffic in her paint-streaked world, though she doesn't move through it so much as it moves around her, reflecting less how things are and more how she is. I always wanted to be in a band. I guess I just never found the right one. She hurries into the subway. In this line of work, you always wind up a solo act. But you cannot run a memory. Four miles, there was Peter. Interior kitchen table, night, flashback. A simpler time, a better haircut. 
Gwen scrolls through photos that Peter Parker, 16, took of her on his camera. How many of these did you take? I think you look great. A picture of Spider-Woman. Is this that dangerous menace? No, she seems like a good guy. Why wear a mask if you've got nothing to hide? All right, no politics at the dinner table. Thank you, May. As the Parkers and Stacys say grace. Well, they didn't really know me. And I didn't really know him either. Interior school day flashback. A bully, Ned, punches Peter in the face, breaking his glasses with an automatic pee at crack. Gwen comes to his defense. Touch him again, Ned. Gwen, it's okay. Off his look, match cut to Peter, working on what we'll come to learn is lizard formula. Till it was too late. Days later, Gwen enters the prom in the gymatorium. Peter? Her spider sense goes off. Lizard shows up and trashes the place, cornering Ned. Gwen, quickly changed into Spider-Woman, leaps into action, fights Lizard in an homage to a memorable moment from Amazing Spider-Man 1. Eventually, she kicks the reptilian through the wall behind the stage. The lizard is crushed by falling rubble, but he's not dead. A hand reaches out of the wreckage, a lizard hand, that then morphs into a human one. What? No. Gwen runs up and throws the rubble off with superhuman strength as Lizard transforms back to Peter. No, what did you do? Just wanted to be special. Like you, Gwen. He tries to pull up her mask, but she stops his hand. Gwen? Who's Gwen? Don't worry. Everything's gonna be okay. Don't go. Everything's gonna be okay. His hand drops. Right as George arrives in his captain's uniform to find Spider-Woman kneeling over a dead kid. From this angle, we see how he'd think she killed this guy and how she'd know he'd think that. So by the time he raises his weapon, she's gone. Hey, hey! Peter. Oh, Peter. Gwen watches from the rafters devastated. Her own father thinks she killed her best friend. I never really made another friend after that. Exterior Chelsea, right now. Gwen leaves the subway, her thoughts drifting to Miles. Except one, but he's not here. And there's no way to get there. Local news coverage hovers around her. Pressure mounts says Captain George Stacy leads the man on for Spider-Woman. Who is she? And why won't she show her face? George stands resolute before a crowd of reporters. I've known May and Ben Parker for 12 years. Peter Parker ate at my table. He was my daughter's best friend. And I will not rest until I find the spider woman. Exterior, interior, Stacy apartment later. Gwen enters through the fire escape, trying not to. How's the band? Uh, yeah, great. I quit. So, you know, thumbs up. She hides in her room. Dad tries to keep the convo afloat. We caught a break in the spider woman case. Oh, that's good. We're close. I can feel it. Me too. Gwen gathers some clothes. It'll be good for us. Don't be so sure. She killed your friend. You don't know that. I do know that. I was there. She ran from the scene. Maybe she didn't have a choice. That stings. I've got a job to do, Gwen. It won't bring him back. I don't want to argue about this. Yeah, I can tell. Gwen packs her clothes. Might not sleep here tonight. Say... You too punk rock to give your old man a hug. Gwen flies across the room and wraps her father up in a hug. An overhug even, because what if it's the last one? George melts. It's all he's ever wanted. All units, possible superhuman event. Guggenheim Museum, of course. Hey, this could be it. Suspect is Adrian Toomes, also known as the Vulture. The Vulture? Uh, I'll see you later. Afraid so. In Gwen's room, continuous, Gwen digs out a police scanner from inside a cute stuffed animal penguin, or spider Gwen, if you will. Oh, you won't? Forty-nine twenty on scene. It's a real mess down here. We're going to need all the help we can get. She kicks open her bass drum, her spider woman gear inside. That picture of Miles catches her eye. If only he was here, she'd have someone to talk to. But instead, she pulls down her mask. 
This is Captain Stacy. I'm five out. Need you to look alive. Good chance our girl shows up and turns off the scanner. Yep. Exterior, New York City, night. Gwen swings out into the city. Balletic, free in flight. It's just simpler up here because down there, it's a mess. Exterior, the Peggy Guggenheim Museum, night. Police everywhere. Choppers, the whole deal. George bursts out of his squad car. Officer Yuri Watanabe immediately hands him a file with a picture of the vulture, or what he's supposed to look like anyway. Yuri, explain to me how a guy with a 40-foot wingspan just waltzed into the Guggenheim unnoticed. New York. Everyone's got their thing. An explosion. Screams. A strange medieval Italian voice. Arrivederci, ragazzi. Nobody wants? You speak Italian? I'm an Irish cop. Yeah, maybe a la pasta or something. Everybody on my signal. Look out for signs of Spider Woman. Whip. Captain Stacy is pulled back by webbing. Yuri, too. Within seconds, the whole crew is webbed to their cars. George is also muffled. All right. <laughs> Yep, uh, we got our sign. Quentin drops down. How, how's the, the manhunt for me going? They're under arrest. Good to know. And with that, she backflips into the Guggenheim, continuous, where her acrobatics land in a smoky lobby. Vulture. Oh, that screaming their name usually works. A silhouette flies up behind her. Wham! Gwen tumbles. I guess that worked. She turns to the manic figure flapping above her, finally gets a good look at... I am a vulture! The pinnacle of mad genius! Not Adrian Toomes, but Adriano Tomino, and he looks like a drawing from Da Vinci's notebook. You're not my vulture. Are you made of parchment? What cost the world have you brought to me to it? Ah! He glitches. You're glitching. Huh. You've been there. Where are you from, bud? I'm an artist, an engineer. Oh, great. The Renaissance man. Gwen swings onto his back like a cowboy, slowing a runaway Mustang. Let me guess. You were having an espresso and some old-timey Leonardo da Vinci dimension, and suddenly a portal opens up, and you wind up here. Am I warm? It's easy. That's pretty much it. The damage vulture is causing looks glitchy. Sidebar? Uh, maybe you could stop making a mess of the art museum for no reason? Vulture points to a huge Jeff Koons balloon animal sculpture. You call this art? We're talking about it, aren't we? Vulture's wings slice off the metal head of the balloon dog. Hundreds of regular-sized balloon dog sculptures spill out. Oh, that's cool. It is. I mean, it's more of a meta commentary of what we call art, but it's also art. Vulture slings her into Coons's chromed bust of Louis the Fourteenth. Oh, look! It's your cousin. Vulture's had enough of her quips. His mechanical beak opens, revealing a flamethrower. Mmm. I wouldn't play with fire, dude. You're kind of made of paper. Gwen evades the flames, but not the harpoon. It pins her to the wall. She braces for the end. Ciao, ragazza. This is such a stupid way to die. Until a hard light laser web lassos Adriano's arm. What the? A hexagonal portal crowbars itself into the room. A blinding light show, a subwoofing sound package, and then a blue and red blur body slams Adriano across the room. Gwen swings over for a closer look. At Spider-Man 2099, a.k.a. Miguel O'Hara. He rises into view, cool and seemingly in control. Gwen notes his futuristic spider watch. It flashes E65. Sorry? Who exactly are you supposed to be? It's classified. Feel the Panther. Sorry. The caped blue satyr? No, I'm... Um, Dark Garfield. No, stop. Macho Libre. I'm from another dimension. You are? Wow. Actually, I'm not confused. My name is Miguel O'Hara. 
are lead an elite strike force dedicated to the security of the multiverse. The Miguel comic drops. A cool stylized intro begins and immediately ends. I actually forget it. Can you just go to any dimension you want to with that watch? It's much cooler than a watch. Okay. Sensitive. <laughs> Look, there's a big flying turkey from the Renaissance I have to bring to justice, so if you don't mind... It's all right, kid. I'll take it from here. Wynn looks behind him. Okay. Knock yourself out. Why are you saying it like that? Bam! Vulture oh. wrecking balls Miguel from behind. That's why. You're not funny. I don't know. As Gwen and Miguel engage Vulture, George leads some cops into the main atrium. He looks up at the three fighting. Typical superhero nonsense. Been really fun cleaning up your shocking mess, by the way. What mess? Kingpin's Collider. What are you guys talking about? What are you guys talking about? You shut up. None of your business, nosy. Miguel, did you say oh. We saved the multiverse. You left a hole wide enough for guys like him to randomly get shot into the wrong dimension. Ultra bulldozes another art installation. George is nearly crushed by a big bronze lobster. Now I'm stuck putting everybody back where they belong before all of time and space collapses. And don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back in Earth 199999. Who's Doctor Strange? Sounds like maybe he shouldn't practice medicine. Gwen webs George to a wall, keeping him out of harm's way. <clears throat> uh, sorry, Captain. Can't talk right now. Attenzione! The vulture laughs maniacally as he releases hundreds of Da Vinci-styled <laughs> wooden drones. So you want me to handle this one, or...? Miguel masterfully destroys the drones in one awesome swoop. Huh, okay. Miguel tears one of Vulture's wings off. Adriano immediately rebuilds that of thin air, as if he were drawing it in a Da Vinci Codex. Ay, por Dios. He's got hammer space. That's an infinite extra-dimensional storage area for cartoon hammers and the like, from editor. Lila, can you please... You know... Lila, Miguel's AI hologram assistant, appears. Nah, you gotta say it first. Call for backup. What? Call for backup. Come on. Please just call for... Yeah, I already called her. But I enjoyed that. A new portal emits a very rad and also pregnant Jess Drew, Spider-Woman of Earth-332. She throttles vultures, stripping his feathers off his back, with the wheels of her badass motorcycle before landing with a 720 degree exclamation point. Uh, Spider Woman. Me too. Gwen looks at Jess's belly. Are you, uh. Oh, this? Well, we don't know the sex yet. My husband wants it to be a surprise. He's really corny, but so hot. Will you adopt me? What? What? Guys, can we focus on the big fire-breathing threat to the time and space, please? Yep, 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 yep. Jess peels out. Gwen swings and heals Vulture in the mandible. Damn. What about her? No. We could use the help. No. Is it because she called you Dark Garfield? No. Do you say anything but no? No. Yes. Why not? You know why. Miguel leaps onto Vulture, clawing his way in past the Renaissance armor. He's an animal. Take a good look at my Greek fire from my backpack! Vulture slingshots one of his homemade bombs through the ceiling, sending glass shattering down into the hall. Don't let him out! He'll just shut the cannon! Vulture activates sulfuric boosters, soars upwards. Miguel still on his back as he finally reaches open sky and pauses taken aback by the sheer beauty of this astoundingly colorful new world he's in. You get used to it. Miguel bears his fangs, about to put this bird to sleep. Shing! A bright light blinds them both, a police helicopter meddling with Miguel's kill. The ground! Will you get out of here? We have you, surrounded! But I'm the good guy! You don't look like a good guy. 
You're just going to have to shut up and trust me. Adriano launches a flock of medieval blades that slash into the helicopter, send it spinning down into the building. Mayday! Mayday! Clear the building! Gwen takes stock of everyone in harm's way, including George. She listens as the rotor beats just like the beat of her drum kit. She locks in on the rhythm and leaps into action. She spins a massive web from one side of the room to the other as she flies through the helicopter bay door and rescues the pilots. She's more than a pro. She's an artist. Jess and Miguel follow her lead, using Gwen's web to slow the plummeting helicopter. A solo act can never pull this off, but a trio, this trio, it's like a symphony. That finally stops the chopper mere inches from the floor. The crowd docks in awe. Yeah, I think it's a Banksy. <laughs> Gwen is proud to earn a nod from Jess, who then looks pointedly at Miguel. Told you she's special. Miguel, no selling it. That's what I was going to do. Miguel picks a tied-up vulture up off the floor. As he cleans up, as he cleans up, Gwen finally collapses in the rubble, exhausted. But her spider sense won't let her rest because George Stacy has his gun pointed right at her. She tries to yank the weapon out of his hand, but she's out of fluid. Hands in the air. Captain, come on. Her voice shakes. His hand does not. Suspect is armed. With what? I'm, I'm out of webs. Get down on the ground. Which is it? Hands in the air. Get down on the ground. You're under arrest. I just saved a bunch of people. For the murder of Peter Parker. Captain, come on. I... You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say. You don't understand. He fires a warning shot in the air. You don't understand. She's out of options. A face-off between his reality and hers. And so the only thing left to do is tell the truth. Gwen takes off her mask. George takes a step back, processing. Dad, I thought about telling you, but you can see why I didn't want to. I didn't murder Peter. I didn't know it was him. I didn't have a choice. What's he even supposed to say? Every version of this is going to be hard. So he takes the easy way out. How long have you been lying to me? Can you just not be a cop for a second and be my dad and listen to me? Do you really think I'm a murderer? No. Yes, he doesn't know what to say. You're in this to help people, right? How could my girl? Well, so am I. And the way to help right now is to listen to me. My sweet girl. Please, you're all I have left. You have the right to remain silent. What? Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Are you really this afraid of me? He barely holds it together. You have the right to an attorney. Dad, stop. Don't get any closer. She pulls her arm out towards him. He's, he instinctively lifts his weapon. That's enough. Hard light webs grab the gun as Miguel disarms George and traps him in a glowing containment field. It won't be the last time we see one. The harder George fights, the tighter it, the tighter it binds him. Metaphor alert, editor. Dad. Jess drops in and pulls Gwen towards her. Hey, hey, come on, just breathe. We got you. Right, Miguel? A challenge from Jess. Miguel will have none of it. Lila, scan this mess. Lila scans the room. No further anomalies. Cannon remains intact. Miguel activates a portal and throws Vulture into it. We can't just leave her here. She's doing this on her own. Gwen barely hears them. Her eyes are locked on George. I don't know how to fix this. Jess looks at Miguel, into her, and something, is that a fatherly instinct? Kicks in, barely. Yeah, well, kind of clever. Miguel tosses Gwen a watch. She takes it in, a way to escape. Understood. One last look at George as Miguel and Jess disappear, and then Gwen turns into the light and, her, and our opening credits drop. Turn it up. A subway train rushes past, people waiting on the subway station, folks walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. We don't need a title card to tell us we're in. Brooklyn, Earth 1610, Miles Dimension. Interior College Counselor's Office Day. Teachers and students fill the Visions Academy office, filling out paperwork, waiting for appointments, etc. Rio and Jeff sit before Ms. Weber, a college counselor. I know he's just a sophomore, but we want to get a jump on the college conversation. So 
I'm sure he's going to be here any minute. He's very serious about his future. A stare of doom from Weber, who's heard it all before. Interior bodega day. A ding dong announces the arrival of a total ding dong. Jonathan Own, a.k.a. The Spot, a goofy looking villain of the week covered in holes. He casually passes by Lenny, the shop owner. Excuse me, do you have an ATM machine? Yeah, around here in the back. Preferably not chained to the wall. Bot stops in front of the ATM. Should be simple enough. Just make a hole, grab the money. He peels a spot off his body, exclamation mark, and places it onto the ATM, then pushes his hand through it to grab the cash inside. Where are you, money? Come here. Spot accidentally makes another hole over by the soda. Dang it. The one behind his head. Hold on. A big hole under the machine. Uh-oh. Which the ATM falls halfway into and gets stuck. Through a window, Lenny sees the bottom half of the ATM pop up in the middle of the street. Hey, who left the ATM on the sidewalk? As Spot tries to slam the rest of the ATM through the floor. Yo, what are you doing back there, man? Sorry, sir, I'll just be a moment. Lenny comes at Spot with a bat. Get yourself out of here. Spot evades by portaling in and out of the different aisles like those whack-a-mole games at arcades. Codename alert, editor. Sir, please just let me rob you. I'm going to rob your little spotted face. A familiar gloved hand enters frame to snag a beef patty from the deli case and place it in the microwave. But see, I'm a scientist, or I was, I am. You, you, you heard of Alchemex? Well, I used to work there. I was actually considered handsome by scientist standards. Anyway, I, I had a little accident. The microwave beeps, a web flips open the microwave. Lenny swings the bat through a hole and into his own face. Sorry, but first of all, I'm not even robbing you. I mean, this ATM machine doesn't even belong to you, right? It belongs to the bank. They're the real criminals. You're the real criminal. You're robbing me. I can't really get a job anywhere anymore being like this, so I've turned to a life of crime. Miles Morales drops into frame upside down, a classic entrance for Spider-Man. Why do people say ATM machine? The M stands for machine. Spider-Man! <laughs> Spot stumbles backwards into one of his own holes and gets portaled into the snack aisle. Hey, Lenny, how much are you for this beef patty, man? Spidey, if you catch him, it's on the house. Spot hops to his feet, excited. Spider-Man, wow, this is real. So, are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? I am the Spot. Miles laughs. laughs. We meet again, <laughs> Spider-Man. A loaf of bread slides out of a hole in Spot's stomach. Miles laughs harder. <laughs> well, that's funny to you? Of course not. So is that a costume? Unfortunately for both of us, this is Skip. Oh, dang. I'm from your past. You see, one year ago... Whoop. Hold up. Miles gets a text from Dad. Where are you? Oh, this has been fun, but I, I really got to wrap this up. Miles tries to web Spot. Spot reflexively holds the webs right back at Miles' face. Miles is trapped in a face palm. Lenny asses this from behind the counter. Maybe just pay me now. Exterior Avenue of Puerto Rico continuous. As Miles runs out in pursuit of Spot. Okay, let's do this one more time. A title slaps on the screen. Miles Morales. We are now in a hand-drawn notebook. Everything is illustrated by an untrained, if talented, teenager. My name is Miles Morales. I was bitten by a radioactive spider. For the last year and four months, I've been Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. Miles is drawn heroically on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. And things are going great. Back to reality. Miles falls out of a spot hole straight into a hot dog cart. Come on, man. You could hurt somebody. Miles webs a flying cab before it crashes into a newsstand. Miles' notebook. Catching all sorts of bad guys. Miles fights various villains with ease, but not right now. Miles punches Spot, but his arm goes through Spot's face hole and Miles cracks himself in the nose. Can you just act like a regular supervillain so to catch you? Notebook. Miles draws a new suit in time lapse. I designed my new suit with some fly ambiance down the side. The drawing of Miles approves. 
Aunt May chills in front of a sold sign, leading Miles to carry a mountain of boxes into a moving van. Aunt May moved to Florida. Miles at the Jeopardy podium. I guess it was a Jeopardy. Add for baby powder with Miles in his Spidey suit. With great powder comes great responsibility. Endorse baby powder. A new segment tells the public that baby powder is bad. Apologize for endorsing baby powder. I made a mistake. A mustache pokes through Miles' mask. Bystanders are gog. A mustache came in and out. Miles is back on the news. I made another mistake. Miles grapples with a giant robot. I'm developing a new twist on my Venom thing. Miles' hands absorb electricity from the robot, which falls backwards into an electrical plant, causing a blackout. Sorry. Miles and his family watching TV together. New Spider-Man, you're a public menace. I miss the old Spider-Man. Always loved that guy, and I always said it. How much longer can I keep lying about who I really am? I hear that new Spider-Man is Puerto Rican. <laughs> he, he seems more Dominican to me. I mean, how would he get if I told him? Jeff and Rio hug Miles. We love, love you, and you accept and accept you, you even though, even you, though have you have been lying, been to, lying us to us for a year. year. But that's just a fantasy, of course. Maybe in some other universe. Miles rests atop a clock tower, looking out at the city. Sometimes I just wish I wasn't the only one, but I don't dwell on it. Miles sketches Gwen in his notebook. A lot. Multiple pages of Gwen drawings. Too many. I miss my uncle sometimes. Next to the Great Expectations mural, Miles spray paints a portrait of his spider friends from the first film. Miles, I see exactly what you're doing here, man. Even though he turned out to be the Prowler. Flashes of Uncle Aaron slash the Prowler from the first film, including Aaron's last words to Miles before he dies. I tried to do what he told me. Just keep going. Dad, where are you? Back to reality. Miles and Spot fight on top of a bus. Miles is distracted by his father's texts. Dad, we're waiting. You're looking at your texts? You understand this is the fight of your lives, right? Dad, this is in Porkage. Sorry, sorry. Just a second, man. Dad, imp forkant. No, go ahead. Take the call. You turn off your phone in the movie theater, but you don't turn it off when you're fighting me. Dad, important. Miles texts back. Counselor's office. In a minute. He wrote it all as one word. Cute, right? Youths. Whipper is unmoved. In the streets, Miles throws Spot onto the pavement. Oh, my nose. That really hurts. Sorry, I just really got to be somewhere. Psych. Spot opens a hole under Miles, who falls through mid-text in the counselor's office. There's bubbles now. Uh, hold on. Miles and Spot tumble past the window behind Jeff. No one notices. Still bubbles. You know, I think it's probably okay. Outside, Spot, Miles, and somehow a goose land on top of a car about to go through an automated car wash. I think this is great. We're finding our rhythm. Another portal dumps them right into Foam Party, a hipster coffee shop. Spot and Miles land hard, sending suds and water everywhere. I've been waiting for this moment for a really, really long time, so. They try to fight, but just slip and slide pathetically. The goose honks like an ace recorder scratcher scratching. Where did the goose come from? Two kids wear different Spider-Man masks. The kid with a Miles mask takes it off. I don't think I want this costume anymore. Almost there, mommy. Smiley face, prayer hands. Miles sling kicks Spot through a hole and onto an exterior rooftop day, where Spot throws a flurry of hole punches. I got you right where I... Ooh. But Miles finally has the hang of this. He redirects Spot's fist back through the hole where it connects with Spot's own temple, flat. And in the day, I'm Spider-Man. Miles shows off his skills by turning Spot into a human, question mark, pretzel. Miles has grown into a fully-fledged Spider-Man. And no one can take that away from me. He pats Spot on the head dismissively and swings away. Don't escape. Unbelievable! 
Come back to the to your nemesis. Your costume's too tight in the back, by the way. Interior, exterior, Vision Academy day. Miles swings through an open window and races through his dorm room as he quick changes into his school uniform. Yo, what's up, man? His roommate, Genki, plays video games in bed. I'm writing an essay. There's a bad guy on the roof of the Peterson building. Can you call the police tell them to pick him up? I don't know. Sounds like a slippery slope. Just this one time. It starts with one call, then it's walkie-talkie, synchronized watches. In a month, it'll be a spider signal. I'm not your guy in the chair. Are those my Jordans? Um, maybe. I can't help it if we're the same size. Miles flips his shoes right off Genki's feet. In the hall, the coast is clear for Miles until the bell rings. Students flood the hallway. Miles leaps to the ceiling and an invisible crawls over them in the counselor's office. Every person is a universe, and my job is to capture your person's universe on this piece of paper. Weber holds up the sheet. That's blank. Exactly. I have no idea who this kid is. I don't know if he knows. On Miles, wincing just outside the door, he girds himself. And he's got to decide if he's going to commit himself to his future, or whatever he's doing instead of being here. Can't have your cake and eat it, too. And bursts in all smiles. Unless you bake two cakes. Miles! Interest in comedy. How's this going? College. Now, son, what do we always say? On time On means time five, means minutes, five minutes, early. minutes early. Five minutes early. I know. I, I know. Look, I gotta get back to being great soon. So can we make this quick? Uh, Miles plops into his seat. Rio's look straightens his posture. Okay, Miles' grades are pretty good. A and AP physics. That's my little man. And AP studio art. He takes after his uncle. A minus in English. She's a tough grader. And a B in Spanish. What? You tried to kill your mother. My, so no, mira, esta es impossible, es verdad? No, oh, it's okay. I'm okay. mommy. Eso no es my fault. Que es esto que no es my fault? Este tomando una clase in Spanglish? Mom, I just missed a few classes. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, fine. Five? Actually, six. You're dead. What you want? Six after his uncle? I just have a lot going on. All right, we can still salvage this. Sorry, salvage? Miles has a great story to tell. I mean, a story at all seems gross. Your name is Miles Morales. Correct. You grew up in a struggling immigrant family. I'm from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is part of America. You want to floor in Brooklyn struggling? Oh, I don't know about struggling. It doesn't matter. You're all struggling. I may captain next week. And now his dream is to attend the top physics program in the nation. Whatever it takes, we'll do it. At Princeton University. In New Jersey? No, that's too far. New Jersey's too far from New York? There's great schools in Brooklyn. Princeton has the best quantum researchers in the country. Quantum radiation, mm-hmm. Moving electrons across dimensional thresholds. Electrons, uh-huh. They're studying dark matter. Yeah, I don't know what any of that means. I can help you figure out how to travel to other dimensions. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that sounds like a really good fake job. Yeah. When you're my age, you follow your dream and on, to, on your own to start a business with Uncle Aaron, right? That's different. We used to see when you were born. Plus, your mom used to. Rio glares at Jeff. Not going to finish that sentence. Look, life is a journey. You all got me into school because you thought I could do something special, and now I think I, I think so too. And the special thing I want to do is this. There are people out there who could teach me the things I want to learn, but they aren't all in Brooklyn. Rio and Jeff trade looks. This is a lot to swallow. Weber slams her hand on the desk. 
That's your story. Now just stick to the script. This all appears to give Miles a migraine, but we know it's actually his spider sense. Miles squints out the window. Spot is free. Are you kidding me? Miles jerks out of his seat. I gotta go. Guys, okay, just keep talking. This is all great stuff. Miles, wait. Did you order the cake for tonight? Oh, you know, call me. I, I gotta go. All right, bye. And then he's gone. Rio chafed. This kid, I swear, what are we going to do with him? Before Jeff can respond, his radio crackles to life. All oh, units, super villain event in progress. Brooklyn Precinct, South to 42, and... Two. What, you're going to leave too? Why am I still here? I know, I'm so sorry, but we'll figure it out. Together. And then he's gone too, the door slamming behind him. Wow. I am so sorry. He's lying to you. Jeff? Your son. He's lying, and I think you know it. Off Rio's look. Interior Miles' dorm room day. We find Miles changing back into his Spider-Man costume, exactly the way he came in. How's your essay? Genki is still in the bed playing video games. Marinating. Uh, this is part of my process. Oh, really? Visible out the window, Spot portals around with the ATM. I think your guy got away. Thanks, I'm on it. Yeah, you seem really stressed. Agree. You're stretched too thin. I've been telling you. All right, thanks for the tip. Miles swings out of his dorm room and is immediately T-boned by Spot. With Rio, walking through Vision's elevated walkway, oblivious that out the window, Spider-Man and Spot are tussling in midair. That was bad. I know! With Jeff as he runs out of the school. What is going on with this kid? Oh. The ATM crashes through the roof of Jeff's police car. Miles and Spot appear inside. They're bad. Officer, Mo Officer Morales. I mean, <clears throat> Officer Moreau. <laughs> this is not what it looks like. He's assaulting me. Miles and Spot portal away, knocking over a sculpture and generally wrecking visions. As Jeff gives chase. Kid goes here, man! Jeff is nearly run over by a giant bouncing bronze molecule. You know how many lemon bars I gotta bake for that? He left in the middle of a fight! I did not. It was the end. <laughs> it was inconsiderate and super rude and a little cocky. As Miles and Spot engage in a weird slap fight. Who's the bad guy right now? Bad guy? He's barely a villain of the week. What did you call me? You realize I'm right here! Everything is... Miles and Jeff are sucked through a spot hole and into a water tower. Under control. Another hole flushes them out into exterior collider site day. The upper edge of a familiar construction site, Alchemax. The site of the collider from the first film, a.k.a. the source of this interdimensional mess. As Spot clocks a sign... Of course we end up back here. Miles and Jeff, in the meantime, try to catch their breath from that wild ride. Unbelievable! You know what? You are just like my son! I am? I, <laughs> it's so silly. What? Imagine that. Miles looks up. Spot is running straight for them. Hmm. Back where it all started. Miles shoves Jeff to safety just as Spot tackles Miles into a spot hole that launches them deep into the construction pit. The crucible of our connection. Don't try me to wow me with big words. I do the crossword every day. Jeff, left behind, readies himself to jump into the scary spot hole, then opts for the stairs instead. In the pit, Spot and Miles tumble past the wreckage of the collider. Is it all coming back to you? What are you talking about? The creation event! On Jeff, climbing down a ladder, getting a phone call. Yeah? Okay, we got cut off. This is our son we're talking about. Nothing is more important than family. Wham. Miles and Spot come portaling right through the ladder, sending Jeff falling to certain death. Miles, acting quickly, flips Jeff to safety on some nearby scaffolding. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle of something. While Spot and Miles land at the foot of the collider site. Destiny brought us here. You see it now, don't you? I really don't. I am your nemesis! Spot throws portals at Miles. Miles dodges with ease. 
Dude, you're not. You really don't remember what you did to me. What I did for you. Uh, no. I worked at Alchemex. I ran a test on this collider that brought a spider here from another dimension. Flashback into Spot's memories. The collider opens a portal to another dimension. A spider in a terrarium is sucked up into a portal and lands in a chamber in the collider's beam. Dr. Jonathan Ohm labels this spider 42 as Liv, Doc Ock, watches over his shoulder. 42. It's home dimension. Spider 42 escapes the lab and ends up biting Miles in the subway station. It escaped and bit you. My spider made you, Spider-Man. On Miles taking this in. What? You ran through the cafeteria. Flashback. Miles and Peter B. Parker run through the Alchemax cafeteria. Remember from the last movie? You took a bagel. Miles nails own in the head with a bagel. You hit me with a bagel. Back to reality. Yeah, I've hit a lot of different villains with a lot of different food. Yeah, finally catching up to the other two, slides down to the bottom of the site and joins Miles, just as Spot's rage boils over, literally. Dark matter seeps out of his body, a freaky display. You make your lippy little sassy jokes and everybody loves them. No one knows what it feels like to be on the other side. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. I created you, you created me. Spider-Man, why did you create this guy? I did, he's talking crazy. I was in this collider room when you blew it up. Flashback. Miles blasts Kingpin into the collider, exploding it. Own carrying a dark matter canister gets bombarded by the collider's energy. Own now a steaming quantum mess, watches in horror as the first spots form on his body. Own his horrific transformation into spot complete, looks up at Miles after the collider blast. Because of you, I lost my job, my life, my face. My family won't even look at me. Parents, scientists, passerbys point and laugh at spot. Back to reality. I made you into a hero. You made me into this. Look at me. You did this to me. Spot runs at Miles. He's crackling with energy, a much more imposing figure than he was only moments ago. Will he finally land a blow? Look at me. I'll make you respect me. Nope. Spot literally kicks his own ass into a portal. I am your nemesis. The portal closes up. He's gone. Where'd he go? He... Kicked his own butt. You know we're supposed to catch the bad guys, right? I always do. Jeff walks away. Exterior collider site continuous. Miles follows Jeff out of the construction pit. Usually. Overhead, a police car dangles from a skybound portal. Gutierrez, get the crane, man. Jeff walks off, upset. Miles doesn't know what to say. This is why... This here is why nobody likes us, man. Us? I'm trying to do right out here. And I'm trying to. You need to be a better role model. I'm a great role model. The police car finally drops from the portal and into the ground, sending a porta potty flying. Gutierrez, get to the crane. Jeff punts a traffic cone in frustration. Do you want to talk about it? Crazy! Well, men of your generation ignored her mental health too long. What am I even doing? It's no matter what I do, someone always thinks I'm blowing it. Miles gingerly approaches. They both stare out at the overlook of the construction site as if it were an ocean. I know the feeling. So, your son, how's he doing? Things gonna figure it all out? Honestly? Yeah. He's a good kid. Yeah? It's scary. He says these things that are so smart. Well, I should probably... And then he does things that are so stupid. Damn. I just... don't want him to mess it up. Maybe get off the kid's ass. Sorry, what? Uh, I don't know. I hate that he's not being honest with me. Maybe he's scared to talk to you. Why would anyone be scared to talk to me? Uh, I don't know. It's just... 
You think you're getting good at being a parent? You think you got it licked and then they go and grow up? They look out across the site, tarps shimmering like waves. I just, I don't want to lose them, you know? Well, as an objective observer with no skin in the game, I say you got to let him spread his wings, man. Miles stretches out his arms awkwardly. Yeah, I don't know. Miles casually leans on the railing, trying to save this. This isn't nice. What is? I should go. Yeah. They catch that holes guy. Don't worry. I don't think that guy's going to show his face again. Flash 2 spots face, such as it is. He finds himself floating in liminal space. What? Okay. An infinite blank page, holes swirling everywhere. I think I kicked myself into myself. These holes are different than the ones we've seen, as if an entire galaxy were whirling within each one. Hello, this is new. Hello! Hello! Echo! Echo! No echo. He floats towards a hole, drawn to it. Hypothesis? I'm going to put my head in that hole. He does. Exterior Manhattan, Earth 1161 day. A street scene right out of a 1963 Steve Ditko Spider-Man comic. Ben Day dots, 60s outfits, a kind of winking naivete. A polka-dotted woman sees Spot's head emerge from a hole. Hello! And whacks him in the dome with her purse. Ow, please, ow, 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 stop it! Spot retreats back to liminal space. That was cool. My holes can take me anywhere. Exterior Lego Manhattan, Earth 13122, day. Spot's big head emerges from a Lego Daily Bugle building. A taxi cab crashes. Mini figs scream. Spot chuckles. So cute. <laughs> Interior Bodega, Chinatown, San Francisco, Earth 688, night. A live action bodega with a familiar face behind the counter. If you saw Venom, you know her as the unflappable Mrs. Chen. Excuse me. Hi. Sorry to bug you. I know you're busy. What do you want? I know it's weird that I just came out of nowhere, but I think I'm becoming a trans-dimensional super being. So? So, I'm literally splitting the fabric of space and time. For you, it's just a Tuesday night. You're acting like weird stuff like this happens to you all the time. You have no idea, pal. Oh, can I have some gum? Before she can answer, Spot is suddenly sucked back through the liminal zone and spit out onto the floor of the exterior collider site day, Earth 1610. Right where he fought Miles, a construction crew is cleaning up the mess they both made. Power of the multiverse in the palm of my hand. My holes aren't a curse, they're the answer! Can you stop talking about your holes? You're making everyone uncomfortable over here. No, you're gonna love this, look! He grunts and he tries to summon a portal. No luck. He realizes the adventure has left him without any more holes. Not a spots, wouldn't you know it? As you were, gentlemen! I'm coming for you, Spider-Man. Exterior Lego Manhattan, same time. Brian De Palma zoom in on Lego Peter Parker. In the Daily Bugle's window, looking down at all the damage Spot's incursion has left behind. Oh, no. Peter hurries past a hopping mad Lego J. Jonah Jameson. Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one, a decent picture this time. Uh-huh, you're absolutely right, boss. Shut up. I'm sorry. Get out of here! Uh-huh, you got it. All right, run a picture of a rancid chicken. I'm on it. Into a bathroom. God, I need a raise. Where he changes into Lego Spider-Man. Beep, boop, beep. Which activates a futuristic watch? Miguel, it's Peter. We got an anomaly. A hologram of Miguel pops up. Thank you, Peter. You're one of our best. Jess, who's on this? Exterior Brooklyn slash rooftop party night. Uh, barbecue parties in full swing. Dozens crowd the roof. Rio's extended family, Jeff's cop buddies, the whole neighborhood. A banner reads, congrats, Captain Morales. Rio weaves through the crowd, craning her neck. Have you seen Miles? Nope. 
Has we still have Miles? Nope. Marinita. Rio's sister Maria forces a microphone into Rio's hands. Uh, what are you doing? That's speech, Pat Jeff, speech! What? Oh, no, 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 I'm terrible at speeches. Maria clanks her wine glass with a spoon. Okay, everybody, todos, hola todos! Oh, dear God, no. Too late, all eyes on Rio. Um, hi. Interior Mexican pastry shop, same time. Miles, dressed as Spider-Man, dictates to Lupe. And I want you to, to you to know, no matter what, even though we had our ups and downs, I'm so, so proud of you today. And every day, parentheses, mostly, LOL, PS. Um, Mr. Spider-Man, it won't fit on one cake. Indeed, her cake runneth over with tiny frosted words. Can you write smaller? Can't you write shorter? Exterior rooftop party, same time. Rio stalls. Uh, what can I say about Jeff? That he was almost 10 pounds as a baby. I know, you're embarrassed. I mean, he almost killed his mother. Look at those shoulders. Oh no, okay, that's it. He was a big baby. Jeff peels the mic out of her hands. <laughs> That's enough. That's it with the mic. No more mics for you. <laughs> Thank you, Rio, for that. Where is that kid? Exterior Mexican pastry shop, same time. Miles backs out of the shop, balancing two cakes. You know, I didn't always know what I wanted to do in life. I was pulling a lot of different directions when I was young. He tries to flip home, but his hands are full. Gotta take the interior subway car later. Miles, as Spider-Man, rides the subway with both cakes. Me and my brother, we came up in this neighborhood, just a couple knuckleheads running the streets. Oh, come on. There's a supervillain blocking the damn track. It is I, the armadillo. Miles zaps the armadillo and kicks it back to Queens. Back on the roof, Jeff Charms, self-effacing, warm at home. You used to chase us out of your stores. And now, if you can believe it, it's my job to look out for you. On Miles, now getting into a taxi. Spider sense, as a thief runs out of a nearby shop with a pile of sneaker boxes. And then I had a kid. And everything changed for the better. I don't know about getting a toast, because I should be toasting you all. Miles leaves the cakes on the cab, webs up the robber, and is in the middle of writing the note when... Worst thing ever. Oh, no, wait! The cab drives off with the dang cakes. No, 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 no. Exterior Brooklyn slash rooftop party, same time. So to my brother, who we miss every single day, he is definitely up there laughing at me right now. He raises a toast to a large mural of his brother Aaron. They're making me captain, bro. To my wife, mi amor. I can't even start because I'll never stop. You'll have to take the mic from me. <laughs> and my son. He looks for Miles. He's not here. Uh, the reason that I do this in the first place. I love you, Miles. And I will always, always be here for you. Benny, man, come on, drop that beat. As Benny drops a needle to save the vibes. I'm going to kill that kid. On Miles, Spider manning up a stairwell, changing clothes, juggling cakes, barely getting his mask off before he bursts out into the party, where he slithers through the packed rooftop, evading Rio and Jeff and all the cousins whose names he can't remember. Hey, Miles! Masito, ya luces como un hombre! Hey, you keep your head up at that school! Hey, hola, primo, you know? Your parents are looking for you. I don't know why. I, I, I've just been here the whole time. Oi! Rio and Jeff are right behind him. How'd they get there? Ah, hi! You were supposed to be here at five. I know, but... You disrespect your dad. Missed his beautiful toast. 
Did he even see the cakes? There's a heartfelt message on them. He opens the boxes to reveal two mushed up cakes. The only intelligible words remaining say, I'm not and proud. That's not what I meant. Your dad studied for eight months. Nine. It's like giving birth. No, it wasn't. Of course not. You made us sit in that office and talk to that lady without you. It was an emergency. What, a graffiti emergency? A partying with some friends I've never met emergency? Explain yourself. Sounds like you're explaining it pretty well. That's funny, Jeff. We got a funny son. I'm not laughing. Maria comes up, wraps the whole family in a group hug. Hey, chica, como tu estas? Oi, pero mira que grande estas. Maria pinches Miles' cheeks like a baby. I don't feel grown up. Maria sees a bit of spider suit peeking out from his sleeve. Oh, this is a cool show. Que es eso un wetsuit? Miles peels away from Maria, makes his getaway. Hey, you chopped out spread? Right back into his mom and dad. Did they teleport? Who are you running around with anyway? Is it your roommate? I never liked him. Yes, you did. He calls by my first name. We hate that. I'm more friends than just Genki. Like who? Um, well, there's Peter, but he left town. There's Gwanda, you know. She also left town. Miles for Dumont and Break. The Spanglish? Well, that certainly wasn't worth it. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe I'm just doing benign, private, unremarkable things and I'm not with you guys? Never. Nope. I am 15 years old. I am basically an adult. Oh, right, right. You don't even have a driver's license. Neither does mom. This was a truck and never planned to leave my life it's not your life it's mine and it's your father's and it's your abuelas y abuelas who put you in this spot and i give anything to be in all right whatever too far way too far whatever wow whatever do i get to say it please tell me i can say it say it you're grounded what for how long? A month. Dad, Mom, are, are you seriously? Dead serious. You don't understand. You're right. I have no idea what's going on with you. So why don't you tell me? Benny turns up the music to cover the raised voices, which in turn have to yell even louder over the music. Just listen to me. Okay, Jeff, you got it. Say whatever you want to say. What do you got to tell me that's so bad? Just as the song ends, the rooftop is dead silent. Miles considers coming clean, telling his parents the truth, but they don't seem in any mood to hear it, so finally defeated. You know what? Never mind. He walks off. Jeff, in response. All right, walk away. Because now you've got two months. That was good, right? Off her look, we throw to interior Miles' childhood bedroom moments later. Miles slams the door and sinks to his ankles. Two months. I'm not grounded. He flops onto the bed. His notebook falls open on the floor. A drawing of Gwen. Miles picks it up, almost smiles. But she's not even here. He's alone. And so he throws on his headphones, tries to get lost in a song. He closes his eyes which is why he does not see the contents of his room beginning to float and spin around him. Is this a music video? Or is it the interdimensional port portal materializing right in front of him? Miles, you got a minute? An echo, more of a dream than a voice. Still, Miles opens his eyes. When? Right there in the middle of his ceiling. Miles can barely process this before she drops onto his bed. Can't you get and shrink wraps him in a hug. How have you been? Uh, I, I've been good. Yeah, just great. Look at you. You grew, huh? Had a little growth spurt? Yeah, 
your hair has gotten pinker. Is this the room you grew up in? Miles desperately hides toys, stuffed animals, pencil toppers. It is, but my dorm room is very adult. Gwen finds a boxed anime action figure on his shelf. Oh, yeah. I used to play with these when I was younger, too. That's a collectible. Oh, I used to have this one. Actually, an extremely rare, highly sought after. Wait, why is it still in the package? Gwen rips open the packaging. Miles muffles a scream. It's fine. No, it's not. But no time to mope because, oh no. Are these your drawings? What? No. Yep, she's got the sketchbook. Wow, you're good. They're all sketches of Gwen. Wow. There's so many. She tosses the journal at him with a smile. Missed you too. So, uh, what are you doing here? I mean, I, I, I never see you again. Want to get out of here? Oh, how he would, but... Um, rounded. Bummer. She backflips out his, out his open window. Miles rushes over to find her effortlessly standing horizontally on the building. Is Spider-Man grounded? She's got his number. He can't help but smile. Moments later, a rap on Miles' door. Miles, your dad's ready to listen now. Rio and Jeff open the door to find the room empty. Just an open window and a girl's sweater. Three months! Exterior Brooklyn golden hour. Miles barely keeps up with Gwen, swinging freely. Wait, hold on. There's an elite society with all the best spider people in it? Okay. So there's this lady, Jess Drew. She rides a motorcycle. Motorcycle? Oh my gosh, I'm learning so much from her. Yeah, I learned a lot of stuff too. Love up my whole thing. Oh yeah? Let's see it then. Thread the needle. Gwen dives between two trucks. Miles follows, narrowly avoiding a third truck. Ah! Easy! And Miguel. The whole thing thing was his idea. Right, and who's Miguel? He's like a ninja vampire Spider-Man, but a good guy. A vampire good guy? I'd pay good money to see that. Uh, Gwen dings a water tower. Miles dongs it. They're playing a superpowered game of horse. So how long ago did they invite you? Uh, only like a few months ago. Months is kind of a long time. Okay, this one counts for two. She swings between two buildings and flips around an antenna. This time, Miles mimics the combo flawlessly. Look at you. Look at me. They grab hot dogs from a street vendor, webbing cash to him as they swing by. Keep the change. So, this club. Look at that dum-dum. A purse thief down below. Guy in the stripes. Ten points as they easily foil the crime. What kind of stuff do you do? We're trying to keep the multiverse from collapsing. Well, I thought we did that already. And web the thief to a lamppost. Last week we had this mission to some Shakespeare dimension and Hobie, and I just like... Well, wait, who's Hobie? Oh my gosh, you love him. He lets me crash in his dimension sometimes. What? What, what does that mean? You, you stay overnight or? But she flies off. So light and happy it seems evasive. Like she's using her new friends to avoid her old life. Anyway, listen. They're pretty strict about where I go or I really would have to come. I really would have come to see you sooner. Right. So uh, why'd you come now? They're standing casually on the side of a moving subway. A kid inside the train won't stop licking the window. Don't, don't, don't do that. 
Oh, hey, uh, Gwen? But she's already gone. Where'd she go? We find Gwen a block or two away beneath the tracks, deploying a futuristic bug with her watch. It crawls up and sticks itself to a pillar, ready for work. Gwen leaves it, catches up with Miles. Hey, there you are. What you doing? Waiting for you. But as she leads him away, we linger on that bug. It's a spider cam, focusing its gaze on a man below. He's dragging a ton of supplies into a crummy apartment. We know this man. It's Spot. Exterior clock tower, early evening. Gwen and Miles walk along the top of a clock tower, the tallest building in Brooklyn, as if they were on the beach. This is a cool thinking spot. Right. I mean, who needs a treadmill when you have the Williamsburg Bank building? That's so interesting. In my universe, it's called the Williamsburg Bank Center. Interesting was the wrong word. So, uh, you and your dad, you still haven't talked? What exactly would we talk about? Hey, Dad, how have the last few months been? You still think I murdered my best friend? Gwen checks her watch. She's monitoring the spy cam footage of Spot fussing around in his apartment. I mean, I don't know. My parents, maybe if I told them. Don't. Trust me on that. We follow as she strolls around and perches on the underside of a ledge, whereas upside down as she feels. Miles approaches. Well... Maybe some things are supposed to be just for us. It's hmm. a nice way to think about it. I'm just a really emotionally intelligent guy. Beyond my years. Gwen laughs softly. He's got her number, too. It really is always great to, to talk to you. Yeah? He moves closer. Yeah, I mean... How many people can you talk to about this stuff? You don't even know. They both feel it. Something between attraction and kinship. Gwen wants to say something, but isn't sure she should. The only friend I've ever made after Peter died. Other than Hobie, right? That's different. Yeah? How's that? I don't know. You and me, it's... Same. Nailed it. It's more than attraction. In the important ways, you know? There's an inevitability to them. They can feel it. In every other universe, when Stacy falls for Spider-Man. Miles' hand inches closer. She sees it. She sees all of it. And in every other universe, it doesn't end well. His hand stops. Well, there's a first time for everything, right? She brightens. Around him, it all seems possible. She leans against his shoulder. So much warmth between them. They linger here. New York winking at them from above. Who would ever want this to end? Exterior water tower, Miles' roof, night. Miles and Gwen hang out under a water tower away from the party. In civilian clothes now, they snuck up here to eat their feelings. Wow. Feelings make me hungry. Oh yeah, these patanos are just deep fried feelings. Down at the party, Jeff and Rio watch their son talk to this strange girl with an alternative haircut. She looks old enough to vote. I bet she doesn't even speak Spanish. Hey, Bob, <laughs> okay, or about her dad. <laughs> Rio winces. He's trying, at least. Back on Gwen and Miles. Miles examines Gwen's watch with envy. This thing keeps you from glitching in the other dimension? Yeah, it's pretty cool. What's going to take for Miguel O'Hara to notice Miles Morales? I'll put in a good word. I'm just saying, if I had a watch, I could come home with you. I did save the multiverse. Miles, look, it's a really small elite strike force. You can turn invisible. There's just... I have, like, electric powers. There aren't a lot of slots. You know that sucky feeling when you're not invited to that really cool thing? Oh, uh, right. Look, if it was up to me... 
I, I know, I know. Miles idly pushes a button on the watch. It starts to hum. Uh, no, don't do that, Miles. She webs the watch right out of his hands. Harsh. It's just really delicate. All right, jeez. Sorry, I didn't mean to snap. Okay, I'm sorry. It's... Clonk, 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 clonk. Up the water tower comes. Hello. Hi. Oh, God. Oh, boy. I'm Miles' mom. Rio, I've heard so much about you. You're using my first name. Okay. He hands Gwen back the sweater. This is nice. We found it in Miles' room, so I guess you must have been there. Jeff struggles up over the little ladder. And you must be Jeff. Call me Jeff. Oh, wonderful. You you mean Lieutenant Morales or soon to be Captain Morales? I, Captain. She mocks a salute. Doesn't go over well. Wanda and I are friends from school. Yeah, we were just catching up. Gwen throws her hand on Miles' back. Aw, don't take him from me. Um. Gwen takes her hand off Miles' back. I'm just kidding. He's grounded, so you can't. Don't break his heart. Beep, beep, beep. Gwen covers the loud alarm on her watch. Shoot. <laughs> Gotta go. Really? Uh, forgot to get my steps in. Really wish I could stay longer. I'm sorry. Bye. Gwen holds out her hand for a brutally formal handshake. Yeah. Bye. She disappears down a fire escape, leaving Miles behind again. Rio shoots Jeff a look. Give me a minute with him. Jeff takes the hand, excuses himself as Miles, forlorn, gazes out at the city. I can hear her being quiet. Busted. She's lingered here to console her son. I hope I didn't ice your game, man. Jesus. No one my age says those words in that order, Mom. It's just hard to see my little man not be my little boy all the time. Papa, you know you can tell me anything. No hay mientras entre nosotros. Well, he tugs at the cuff of his spider suit. Should he tell her? I'm... Sorry, I was late. Rio knows there's so much he isn't saying. She closes her eyes, takes a deep breath, then... Oh. Huh? She seems like a nice girl. Is this a trick? It's not a trick. Jeez. Rio grabs his jacket. What are you... Let me fix you, just... She straightens out his clothes. For years, I've been taking care of this little boy, right? Making sure he's loved and that he feels like he belongs wherever he wants to be. He wants to go out into the world and do great big things. And what I worry about most is they won't look out for you like us. They won't root for you like us. He looks at her, her strong eyes filled with worry. So here's the deal. Wherever you go from here, you have to promise to take care of that little boy for me. Make sure he never forgets where he came from. And he never doubts that he is loved. And he never lets anyone at those big fancy places he's going to be in tell him that he doesn't belong there. And when he comes home, and he better come home, you're going to be early and you're going to be holding a normal nice cake. Yeah, okay. You gotta promise, Miles. I promise. Just don't get lost. May I ask? All right. Cool. Finish your mommy. He kisses her cheek. This casual goodbye, literally, may I have your blessing, has a little more meaning tonight. Que dios te bendiga. Now go, get out of here. As he starts to go, 
And when you come back, you're still grounded. He laughs. <laughs> ha ha, yeah, I'm smiling like it's a joke, but it's true. Yeah, I figure. See you later. When he came. Rio watches her only child disappear into the city, knowing he's not really a child anymore. Exterior fire escape continuous. Miles hurries down the fire escape, changing as he goes. Exterior Brooklyn apartment building, night. Gwen swings to the side of the elevated track where she left her spider cam. Across the street, Spot's apartment building is now full of massive Swiss cheese holes. Police swarm. Gwen shoots a web at the gear shift of the empty squad car below. Cops chase after it as it rolls backwards. Miles arrives seconds later, just in time to watch Gwen use the distraction to swing into Spot's apartment, where Miles follows, invisible, as Gwen assesses the damage. Shoot. Tiny drones launch from her watch to scan the area. Bad news. Shoot, 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 shoot. Miles lingers on a hive of terrariums, terraria, containing spiders. One is empty. It's labeled Earth-42, deceased, sad face. The spider that bit Miles. Show me what happened. Replay commencing. The drones project a hologram of Spot entering, arms full of hardware. This is what Gwen's camera recorded while she was on the clock tower with Miles. I need more spots. Right under where my nose should have been. Just need a little bit more dimensional juice. Never did come up with a good name for that. Uh, branding was never my strong suit. Gwen hits fast forward. Hologram spot connects pipes, hooks up wires, types code. If I connect the city power line to my micro collider prototype, it could generate a little more concentrated dark energy. Ooh. Just enough to get me somewhere with a full-size collider. He fires up a micro collider, a miniature version of the big collider that started it all. Spider-Man. I'll make you pay for everything you took away from me. A roiling beam of, what's the opposite of light, erupts. This is going to work. Or vaporize me and everything in this building, which would not be good. Dude. Spot lowers his finger into the beam. Its energy tears violently through his body. Spot swirl as the black beam overtakes him and sucks him into a tiny dot. Dude. Dude. Kaboom. The resulting implosion is concussive, devastating. If that wasn't a hologram, they'd have been eviscerated. Replay complete. No! Why, 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 why? A hologram of Jess appears. Gwen, hi. Fuck. What you doing? Nothing. I'm good. All good. Yeah, everything's good. Bye. Gwen turns off the Jess hologram. Boop. Jess overrides her. Boop. Where's the bad guy you were supposed to monitor? He just stepped out for a moment. Dude. He's just some villain of the week. Lila. Lila appears and pulls up a holographic multiverse map. Crap King. Oh, hey, look, I got him. Never mind. Hold on. Slippery guy. Miles processes all this from the shadows. Who are all these people? What is Gwen even doing here? Did you go see your little friend? What? No. I mean... Are you kidding me right now? Only briefly from afar. How far? Like, you know, about this far. Gwen holds up her hands three feet apart, then slowly adjusts to more like three inches. Oh, that's way too close. Girl! I just had to know how he was. I honestly can't with you. Look, I know I messed up, okay? He can't be part of this. I know. I'll never see him again. On Miles. Never? Guys, he's making his own portals. He can jump wherever he wants. Could be a total cannon killer. You said he was a villain of the week. Do you know how bad this is for you? Hmm. Every dimension he stops at has an alchemax. What's he up to, Gwen? I don't know. Trying to make himself more powerful so he can beat me. You don't know. Amazing. My star pupil, everyone. I'll get him, okay? I can get back up. 
If Miguel finds out, I let you come. Don't tell Miguel. What if he sends me home? That's the last thing Gwen wants. I got him. Lila highlights one point on the map. Earth dash 50101. What do you want to do? Not get fired, for starters. You never made a mistake. You never got too close to someone. I did, but I got over it. That came out a bit harsher than she wanted. She feels bad. God damn it. Alert the local spider. Tell him Gwen will meet him there. I'm on it. Thank you so much. I promise I will not let you. Okay, you're welcome. Shut up. You've got an hour to fix this or I can't help you. Jess blips out as a portal opens for Gwen. Miles moves towards her, invisible, upside down in every way. Gwen turns back for one last look, right through him, out of the distant rooftop where she thinks he is. Goodbye, Miles. They're inches and yet worlds apart. Should I say something? I should probably say something. He makes himself visible and she's gone. Forever. Miles looks out at Brooklyn, the only home he's ever known. He feels the portal closing behind him. If only he could go with her. Maybe he should. Miles turns. Three, two, fuck it. He leaps into the... Exterior Spider-Verse. Time is irrelevant. We tumble with Miles through the webbing of the multiverse. Something's different when Miles does this. It's more disruptive. Exterior Earth 50101 day. Miles glitches as he ping-pongs through a maelstrom of colorful buildings, snapping dozens of bootleg power lines. He's just trying to get his bearings when he barrels through an Indian wedding. Congratulations. Welcome to Mumbatton. Multi-level freeways, giant billboards. This city built into a giant crevice isn't tall. It's deep. So, so deep. And yet Miles still manages to collect himself as he falls, eventually spotting Gwen in the distance. She's swinging after. This is incredible. You never know what you're capable of until you just go for it, you know? Spot is now using his holes for propulsion, almost flying. He's leveled up significantly since we last saw him. I've got my eyes on him. Try getting hands on him. You're literally hovering. Spot pops in spot pops in front of a family of four on a scooter. Pardon me, locals. How oh, four in there? That's very dangerous. Then behind two diners at a restaurant. Well, that looks good. What about Alchemex? And now he's in between another couple on a balcony. It's a place with the big collateral. Who? Gwen just webs Spot to the wall. Hey, cow guy, move over. That's the best you could do? Gwen is about to punch Spot out cold when... Gwen, I'm here to help. Gwen turns to see... Miles. Wham, giving Spot the opening he needs to portal kick her. You weren't expecting that, were you? Into a balcony. She hits the back of her head, drops into the gaping city. No. Neither was I! I am in the zone! Miles dives after Gwen. I got you. And nabs her inches before she's pavement pizza. But she's not as happy as he would have hoped. Did you follow me? Uh, no. I just saw where you went, and I went there without you knowing. You're not supposed to be here. What are you talking about? Um, how about that? <laughs> Miles glitches and they both drop to certain doom until someone else swips past and swoops them up. Meet Paviter Prabhakar, a.k.a. Spider-Man India. I shouldn't have ever come to see you. Dang. Paviter uses his unique yo-yo bracelet to clock Spot in the face before landing with a flourish on top of a spire. Hey, who's the new guy? Hey, Pop. He smiles, and he wasn't invited. You weren't invited, and you came anyway. Oh, new guy, you must be in. You must be in love with you. Uh, no, I'm not. Wow, Pop, Pop. That's totally wrong. Oh, I'm. I'm very good at reading people. Who are you? I'm glad you asked, new guy. I'm. I'm not a new guy. A Spider-Man India comic lands on the growing pile. My name is Pavader Prabhakarak. <laughs> and for the past six months. Wow. Six? And even he got a watch? 
We're in Pop's bedroom. He pops out of bed, shirtless and cute. Being Spider-Man is so easy. I wake up, skip the workout because I am naturally buff, and I and I don't know what to get, and I don't want to get too big, you know. Do nothing with my amazing hair. He whips his glorious hair. Miles pops into frame. You don't use any product at all? Wrong. I uh, Just coconut oil and prayer. Pop breezes through his day. Then I swing by school. Don't really have to try, but I do anyway. Fight a few bad guys. Feed a few street dogs. Quick break for a cup of chai with my Maya auntie. But time stands still as he sips tea with his auntie Maya. Miles pops in again. I need chai tea. Pav record scratches, halts the story. What did you just say? Chai tea? Chai means tea, bro. You're saying tea tea. Would I ask you for a coffee with the room for cream? Cream? Jesus Christ. Um, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Now that that's cleared up, technically. Then I hang out with my girlfriend, Gaia Tri. She's an extremely classy teenager. Bob has his arm around a cute girl on the railing overlooking the canyon, a lot like Marine Drive in Bombay. Oh, I have to go. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Tonight I was thinking. Bob's spider sense wails as Inspector Singh approaches. Bob's arm drops off Gaia Tree, and now they're both holding textbooks. Hello, police inspector. Si. This is your daughter. I do not know her. Pavita swings along and grabs a papadom from a street vendor. And to top it off, I live in the best possible Spider-Man city. Mumbatan. Quick tour. This is where the traffic is. This is where the traffic is. This is also where the traffic is. This. There's traffic here, too. Uh, this is where the British stole all our stuff. Whoa. A spot portal nearly beheads Pav, bringing us back to the fight. The three spider folk try to web Spot, but he shoes away their webs with ease. He is smug, much more in control of himself, spinning a portal on his finger. Ah, uh, hello, Spider-Man. Hi. Hey. Not you. I think he means me. Miles attempts a kick, but his foot lands in a hole in Spot's torso. Wow, hi, how are you? Spot throttles Miles backwards into a wall. You tell I leveled up my game? I'm on a journey of self-improvement. And you came to India. That's a Western culture cliche. Don't eat, pray, love me, bro. Oh No, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. No, now let me guess. You're going to ask me about saffron and cardamom <laughs> and non-bread, which is the same as saying bread bread, which is the same as saying chai tea. Oh, I love chai tea. No! Bob rushes Spot but misses and flies into Gwen. Miles gives chase, following Spot as he skips portals through a busy marketplace. Mom, man, I think maybe we got off on the wrong foot. Let's just talk about this. Fine. You made me feel empty, like I had a hole inside me. But now I found out what to fill that hole up with. More holes! That doesn't make any sense. Whoops. Miles falls into a hole that blasts him through a billboard as he collects himself. It will! I'm okay, don't worry. We won't. Miles catches up as Gwen and Pav swing after Spot. This romantic tension is so palpable. Will they? Won't they? If Spot gets more holes, he'll be unstoppable. We can't let him get it to... Alchemax? Crap. Spot has already opened a hole and entered the Alchemax building, which hangs out canty levered over a cliff. See, how can you guys even concentrate? Interior Alchemax building moments later. As they follow Spot through the building. Hey, does he know about Hobie? What should I know about Hobie? Oh, looks like he did not know. Spot makes a hole and disappears beyond the glass into the hub of a busy control room. Once inside, he activates an electrified force shield, blocking anyone else from entering. Excuse me, sir. Would you please deactivate this wonderfully strong barrier? It can't be turned off until the collider sequence is complete. Collider sequence? Oh no. 
And now Miles realizes why Spot has been searching for an Alchemax. It's got a collider room, just like the one in Miles' dimension, the one whose explosion made Dr. Own into Spot. Miles smashes against the shield. He has to get through. You don't know what you're doing. Spot makes his way to the main control panel. I'm about to be so much more than a villain of the week. I'm sorry I called you that, okay? You're a great villain. Not yet, I'm not. Spot pushes buttons and turns dials. The collider begins to whir. The hadronic coil is spinning faster and faster. How's it going now? Great. Gwen turns Jess off. Anyone got any ideas? Oh, I have so many, but none for this. Miles holds up a finger up to the force shield. It crackles. An idea. Pan back. I've been working on something new. Miles presses all his fingers to the shield, slowly pulling its energy into his body. Slowly. So slowly. Do you want us to do something, or do we just stand here? Are you, like, charging it? No, I'm absorbing it so I can shoot it back. It looks like you're charging it. Does this power have a name, or... Please hold your questions until I'm done breaking this thing. Almost there. I don't get it. Just let me do this. What's that sound? Oi, oi! A raging power cord shatters the shield and simultaneously announces the awesome arrival of the madman from Camden, the spider punk with a penchant for funk. Put your hands together for Hobie Brown. Hobie! Hobie, my guy! Strong, long, and skinny hot, covered in torn plaids and denims, a spiked mohawk coming out of his spider mask, a throbbing electric guitar slung across his back. Yeah, this guy rules. And thus, as far as Miles is concerned, this guy sucks. Look at that, another one. Look how many different variations of you guys there are. Man like Pa, big stepper, yeah, mate. Sorry, one sec, hang on. Thing just freaked out. You a cool bitch. Hang on. Okay, they do a cool handshake. What's this dude saying? It's English for we get along great and we're close friends. This is the younger from 1610. Do you understand this guy? Bot attacks. The spiders spring into action. Hey, Hobie, thanks for breaking the shield. I loosened it. Bit of advice. Use the palm, not use your fingers. What's up with your suit? Is he bleeding from the armpits? Miles, Hobie, Hobie, Miles. I, I never heard her heard of because Gwen barely ever mentions you. A Hobie comic slash zine slams on screen. Uh, my name's Obi, Obi, Obi Brown. I was bitten, I was bitten by, wouldn't you, like, wouldn't you like to know? And for the last three years, I've been the one and only... Hobie pulls off his mask, his face scratched out. Wait, 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 wait. you really think I'm going to tell you my secret identity? Come on. Come on out of it. Hobie rages across his photocopied collage punk poster, Eleanor Rigby-looking East London come downtown New York. That is when I'm not playing shows, antagonizing fascists, staging unpermitted political actions slash performance art pieces, or having a laugh at the pub with the mandem. I'm not a role model. I was briefly a runway model. I hate the AM. I hate the PM. Hate labels. I hate RVA, right? I'm not a hero because calling yourself a hero makes you a self-apologizing narcissistic autocrat. Now oh, you hated labels. Back to the fight. Everyone against Spot. Four against one. A more or less even fight thanks to Spot's increased power set. Gwendy, you left your jumper around my place. What's a jumper? It's a sweater. How many sweaters do you have? Oh, uh, that's not mine, I'm sure. And your toothbrush. Wait, what? Are those my trunks? Chunks. Hobie's... Chunks. <laughs> his chucks, I guess. Hobie slingshots Gwen from his guitar and she flies at spot, but gets hold straight into Pavita. Y'all make a heck of a team. I don't believe in teams. Aren't you in a band? I don't believe in consistency. This guy's killing me. Spot wills Miles into his grasp as he sends Hobie, Pavita, and Gwen flying out of the room. 
The collider's turbines spin faster and faster. This is going to be good for us, Spider-Man. You and me, we're finally going to live up to our potential. You'll finally have a villain worth fighting, and I won't be just a joke to you. Blinding light as the collider's beam explodes into the room. Dark matter dots swirl in the middle, history repeating, and Spot floating towards it, be tific until, yoink, Miles has flipped a web, holding Spot back. Hobie, Pob, and Gwen all help Miles pull Spot in a tug of war. You're not a real, not a joke, right, gang? Absolutely. Completely unamusing. I don't believe in comedy. Just kidding. No one here thinks you're a joke. They won't after this. Nip. Spot uses a hole to sever the webbing, then vanishes into the beam. A long, quiet beat. Well, that was another easy adventure for Spider-Man. Kakum. The room is leveled in a brilliant explosion of dark energy. Everyone hits the floor as black Kirby dots flow from Spot's blazing silhouette and throw Miles into an intense spider sense vision. A massive battlefield, falling rubble. Spot, more powerful than ever, cackles with delight as he devastates Brooklyn. <laughs> Miles' dad, Jeff, runs to save a child in a red shirt. I'm coming! Miles watches it on abject horror, unable to move. Back to reality. The blast is over. What was that? Spot seeps in roiling dark energy like a human black hole. Our future. No. I'm going to take everything from you like you took everything from me. Miles is deeply shaken by the frightening display, and Spot knows it. Taunts him. See you back home, Spider-Man. Spot then opens his arms and disappears into himself. Gone. The building trembles, but Miles' attention is a world away. Miles, you okay? We've got to go. Oi, living up, mate. No time to get dizzy. Hello, hello. Uh, Miles is still reeling. Unable to focus as Gwen pulls him the hell out of there. Exterior Alchemax building continuous. As the group escapes through a blizzard of concrete and steel, they hear a chilling metallic groom, a cleaving. Miles turns as half the cantilever building pitches forward. It's headed right down the cliffside, half the city in its path. And just like that, Miles has clarity. He stops following. He's going to lead. We'll clear the path. You slow down that building. Yeah, I'll do it. Not because you told me to. Hobie throws Gwen a line of his webbing. They do their best to slow the huge teetering half of the Alchemax building. While Miles and Pravita swoop down in a relentless, heart-stopping display of life-saving teamwork, rescuing as many citizens as possible from the sedan-sized chunks of concrete. But Gwen and Hobie's webs can't hold the building forever. Snap. It plummets towards the busy bridge below a kajillion pound cannonball of certain death. All four spider people instinctively dive down together, a desperate attempt to save as many people as they can. A boulder takes a big bite out of the building, pulling a bus halfway over the edge. And inside the bus, Pob sees... Gayatri, no! His girlfriend is terrified as the bus tips over and falls. Pob flips a web line onto the heavy vehicle, holding it in midair, all of his strength keeping the line tight. Gwen, in the meantime, gets an alert on her watch. Hologram Lila appears. Gwen, heads up. Markers are predicting an incoming cannon event, so tread carefully. I'm on it. Nearby, Hobie and Police Inspector Singh direct people to safety. Hurry, everyone! This way! Quickly! Somebody help! Help! Definitely not you. A half a block away, that was supposed to be a little girl, I guess, in a red shirt. Don't be afraid! I'm coming! Pavita, still straining to keep the bus from dropping, sees Singh running into the falling rubble. Inspector Singh. Pavita, stuck, can only watch as Singh risks certain death and grabs the child. Hold on tight! Miles clocks Singh, about to get crushed by the impending building, just like the vision of Jeff he had. I got him! Miles! She grabs Miles before he can jump down. Don't worry, Dread and Eel ring the bell, right? It's too dangerous. I'll be okay, I promise. Miles! Miles swoops down, mere feet ahead of the falling building, and hurls Inspector Singh and the kid to safety. But not before he himself is buried in a pile of smoldering rubble. Gwen desperately scrambles into the pile. Miles, no. No, 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 no. 
She peels back chunk after chunk of merciless concrete, trying to will away the unthinkable until Miles crawls out from beneath the destruction. You're all right? I promised. Inspector Singh and the kid are safe, Miles is safe, and Gayatri is safe as together Hobie and Pavita pull the bus to safety. Gayatri steps out, Pav rushes up to her with a tight hug. Okay. I, I was so worried. I mean, you seem like a nice young woman that I do not know. But she's already looking for... Baba! Gayatri! She sees her father, swallows him in a hug. Not bad, right? Gwen looks down at her watch, still flashing red. Cannon event disrupted. Whatever that means, it isn't good. Right. Singh offers Pav a firm handshake. I've never seen him so emotional. Excellent job. Pav nods to Miles. Thank you. Hobie throws his arms around Miles like an old chum. The people of Mumbatan surround them with cheers. This feeling, this is why they do the job. So, what do you think? What I always think. You're amazing. You make a good team. Yeah. What's wrong? Miles follows her eyes to discover dark matter creeping up the sides of the canyon like ivy. What remains of Alchemax glitches and slips into a growing black hole in the ground. Guys, what's that? It's a metaphor for capitalism. It's a lot worse than that. Above them, an interdimensional portal announces the arrival of Jess Drew and a whole-ass spider SWAT team. Okay, guys, secure the area, clear all civilians, and let's contain this quantum hole. Miles knows you miss all the shots you don't take, so... Hey, I'm Miles. Oh, we actually met before when I was invisible. Jess continues past Miles. This is serious. I know who you are. For the first time in his young career as Spider-Man, Pavita seems shaken and truly worried. Is everything going to be okay? No one wants to answer that honestly. Instead, Jess's team gets to work mitigating the damage, setting up a laser perimeter around the gaping hole. Gwen approaches gingerly. Let me explain. Miguel wants you back at HQ. Miles was just about to head out. All of you. I don't follow orders. And neither does he. I'm going to HQ? Miles bounds ahead as Hobie sighs and a smash to exterior total darkness day. Miles, Gwen, Jess, and Hobie drop from a portal into a void or an elevator? Okay, yes, an elevator. Moving down. Maybe up? Hobie peels off his mask. He's Natch mate insanely hot. How are you even cooler under your mask? I was this cool the whole time. <laughs> wow. We're upside down in a glass elevator, shooting up a futuristic skyline straight out of Sid Mead's sketchbook. This is Nueva York of Earth 928, the bilingual hometown of Miguel O'Hara. Interior Spidey HQ, continuous. Doors open to a brutalist foyer packed with spider people. All study screens with footage of Spot's recent incursions. Yo, this place is wild. Any sign of Spot? Malala Windsor, Spider UK of Earth 835 runs this floor. Let me ask. Hey, anybody, Spot, Spot? So funny. Anybody else got jokes? Hey, now that you mention it. Every spider in the hallway chimes in with their own quip. This is unbelievable. This is the lobby. Oh. Welcome to Spider Society. Full pack to reveal so many spider people, it will make your fucking head spin. A full-on interdimensional spider base. That much, in it? What happened to that small elite strike team? A lot of these are part-time. Hobie pulls her aside. Wendy, how much have I told him about this, about his place and all this? Miles glitches behind them. Maybe not enough. Jess tosses Miles a fancy bracelet. Here. My watch? It's a day pass. This just keeps you from 
Miles glitches again. The wristband activates and the glitching stops. Doing that. A beefy squad of spider people run past. Hey, Quinn! Hey, Peter. Hey, I'm Miles. I'm a new recruit. Hey, Peters. Hey, Gwen. Hey, Gwen. Hey, Gwen. Does Gwen know everybody? Peter parked car of Earth 539 E1 rolls up. He's a buggy. Peter, take a team to the transport deck. Start dealing with this spot mess. Peter honks in agreement. Tarantula, Spider Side, Last Stand, and Lego Peter jump in the car and drive off. Oh, a mess. More like a success in progress. Ben, I need Ben Riley, a.k.a. Scarlet Spider, leans against a pillar. Deep emo vibe here. Sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm thinking about my past. Actually, we need you here for some reason. <sighs> that was a particularly harrowing memory. You? Okay. A horse and a spidey mask clumps up. This is Widow, and her rider is Pat O'Hara, web slinger of Earth 31913. Why does the horse need a mask? To conceal her face. Giddy. Up. <laughs> they web up out of frame. As our crew moves on past several dozen containment fields, each restraining a weird variation of a classic villain. Who is in these laser cages? Anomalies. Folks who wound up in the wrong dimension. We kick their butts and send them home. Miles wants to stop and gawk, but Gwen seems suspiciously eager to move on. They're not very interesting. What? We got a bunch of Doc Ox. Oh, that's interesting. A Mysterio, Miss Stereo, video game guy. I love video games. Another video game guy. Uh, are you? Are you talking to me? Typeface. Go to Helvetica, Spider Man. <laughs> Old. <laughs> interesting Craven, a boring Rhino, a Prowler. Prowler? Not your Prowler. Miles stares agog at a live-action Donald Glover prowler. Hey. Hey. It's rude to stare. Well, that one myself. I slipped. You? I did all the work. You. Uh, how many missions have you been on together? Uh, not that many. Uh, a couple dozen. That's cool. Miles bumps into Margot Kess, spider bite of Earth 22191. She's a virtual spider woman around Miles' age. Sorry. They spider resonate with one another. There's a vibe. I'm Spider-Man. No way. All of us are. We just keep moving. But Miles has already followed Margot over to the go-home machine room, where Margot quickly blips to a far corner of the room. Whoa, where are you? I'm an avatar. My body is back in my parents' dimension, chilling in a gaming chair and eating Fritos. She shows him her home dimension, where we hear her parents arguing through a wall. Here is better. Now you're dead. Margot operates a console as a scary alabaster semi-mechanical spider named Anya descends from the ceiling. What does that do? I thought I'm having a great name. The go home machine. What'd I say? I voted against it. Anya weaves a light web around an anomaly, Rhino of Earth 67. It detects whatever dimension your DNA is from and sends you there. Super humane and not creepy at all. See you, dog. Don't come back. Rhino rides in pain as he disappears. We should go. I want to keep the boss waiting. Um, CRM? Good luck out there, man. Gwen flips miles away from her. Jealous. Okay, bye. Margo watches him go. Something about this kid. Transition to a live security feed of miles and crew. Someone's watching them. Miguel sounds hangry. He likes those empanadas from the cafeteria. Don't ask me why. 
We're in Miguel's lab, and Miguel is watching them on holographic screens. He's a man alone, his expression hidden in shadow. My name is Miguel O'Hara. I'm this dimension's one and only Spider-Man. At least I was. But I'm not like the others. Miguel gives himself a pneumatic injection. I don't always like what I have to do. But I know I have to be the one to do it. And I've given up too much to stop now. Miles, Gwen, and Hobie follow Jess down a back hallway full of impressive engineering works in progress. Hobie pulls a blinking panel from the wall. Uh, this doesn't even do anything. I bet this doesn't even do anything. Maybe it did before he ripped it out of a wall. Yeah, it's propaganda, bro. To distract you from the truth. What's that? I ain't got a Scooby-Doo, mate. Because that's what they meant. That's what they want. Scooby-Doo is Cockney rhyming slang for Clue, editor. Hobie slightly pockets the panel. Why do you want to be part of this lot? Get a watch. Make your own watch. Hobie palms a transistor, quite the klepto and hypocrite. Bet you got a nice setup, eh? Nice parents? They're fine. I mean, you got a fine, but he just wants what's best for me. That's a bloody shame. Why? Because you're not ready for everybody else. On Miguel, watching an alternate version of himself on a monitor, happily playing with his daughter in some other dimension, Miguel shuts the screen off. Hobie pulls Miles aside before they cross the threshold of the lab. This to me, bro. Her point of being Spider-Man is your independence. Being your own boss. You don't need all this. And why are you here? Good question. Looking out for my drummer, is all. He steals another piece of tech. Some kind of method here. I want to be in a band. I want to see my friends. I need to watch do that. Guys, come on. All right, it's squashed. Just don't enlist till you know what war you're fighting. When Hobie and Miles continue into the center of the lab, Miguel's at an elevated workstation. It lowers very slowly. It's slow, but it's his thing. It's still lowering. Hobie throws up his hands and walks off. Miguel O'Hara, meet Miles Morales. Hey, get the deal. I speak Spanish. Te trae una empanada. Miguel laser webs the empanada out of Miles' hands. Maravilla. And drops it in the trash. Listen, I, I, I'm really excited to get going in. Great. I have some fresh new ideas on how to capture the spot. Oh, wow. He just wants to be taken seriously, you know? Mm -hmm. I guess we all mm -hmm. do. Miguel uh -huh. launches the clattering trash can at Miles. Hobie casually yoinks the empanada. He's worried about Spot. I'll worry about Spot. But I do. Miguel, it's not his fault. Fault? Oh, hold up. You blew another hole in the multiverse. He doesn't know any better. I do know what not... Know what? What you did, Gwen. And you. Hobie offers Miguel a flowery bow. I'm just gonna try to ignore you. I, I just can't even... I ain't even here. What's happening? Oh, oh, here. Miguel, go easy on the kid. It's our old pal Peter B. Parker eating a burger, of course. He had a terrible teacher. He had no chance. Peter. <laughs> Peter? Oh, boy. Humbly, reality Spider-Man has arrived. Yay. Miles rushes over and hugs Peter. So happy to see him. Miles! Dude! Don't be afraid of my friend Miguel. He just looks scary. He's got no bite. Peter? You're growing up on me. You look great. You look solid, you know? Define solid. What happened? You bleeding from the armpits? Don't worry about the suit. We'll get you a new suit. Peter, you gotta tell him. Wait, what is that? Peter is wearing a baby Bjorn. Sweet. Mayday Parker, eight months going on four years. Swings past and up into the rafters. Mayday! You have a baby? I have a baby! He's crazy. Peter chases after his daughter with a familiar bracelet. 
Don't forget to keep your little day pass on, honey. Oh, you have one of those too. I didn't know they made those for adults. Peter tries to get a hold of her. She's not making it easy. It's an anarchist. I'm coming up to get you. Here I come. Don't move. Peter catches up to Mayday on the ceiling. Ah, I got you. I was going to grab making that web shooter. I shouldn't have done that. That was an actual mistake. Mayday wiggles out of his grasp and drops out of frame. Peter catches her. She laughs, loving this new game. Hey, you want to see pictures? I mean, she's right there, so. Peter shoves pictures of Mayday and Gwen's face. Oh, look at this pic. She's a special kid. Oh, you got them. They are, wow. She's she... incredible. Oh, this is her funny face. That's her mad face. This is the studious one. Watch how this thing's going to crack you up. Oh, Miguel's going to die. Hey, look at this. Mayday crawls onto Miguel, who is super annoyed. I'm trying to hold a serious adult conversation here. You know, the only, you're the only Spider-Man who isn't funny. We're supposed to be funny. The fate of the multiverse is. So you always lose me with that. I hear you say the fate of the multiverse and my brain dies. You guys smell that? Made it took a crap. Peter grabs Mayday and weaves a diaper out of webs. Yep, she's a Parker. That's what happens when a Parker eats an avocado. Miles, you disrupted a canon event. Canon event? Kid wasn't thinking. That's not how he works. That's insulting. Taking a crap on the establishment. I salute you. Anyway, what are you upset about? I say those people. And that's the problem. Lila, do your thing. Lila blips into frame. What yeah. thing? The information explaining thing. Okay. Lights out. Lila projects a giant branching arterial multiversal la uh, map. What's this? This is everything. Can you be more specific? Can you not talk for a second? A web pattern emerges. And this is all of us. Every confirmed spider. All of our lives woven together in a beautiful web of life and destiny. The Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. Huh. That's stupid. It's called the Arachnohumanoid Polymultiverse. Which sounds stupid too, I guess. Miles' spider sense triggers at the sight of several rather important looking points. And these nodes, where the lines converge? They are the canon. Chapters that are a part of every spider's story. Every time. The nodes expand to project big moments in their shared lives. A spider bites Peter Parker, Peter B. Parker, Gwen, Miles. Some good, some bad, some very bad. Uncle Ben dies in Peter's arms. Peter dies in Gwen's arms. Scores of spiders losing loved ones, including Miles losing. Uncle Aaron. A note opens to show a classic comics moment where Captain George Stacy saves a red-shirted child from falling rubble, only to be crushed himself. This one. Event ASN-90. A police captain close to Spider-Man dies, saving a kid from falling rubble during a battle with an arch nemesis. Amazing Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield, kneels as Captain Stacy dies. We see this moment echoed across many other spider stories, including Peter B's. What happened to you? Peter's eyes say it all. And me. Eh, what of it? That's how the story's supposed to go. Canon events are the connections that bind our lives together. And those connections can be broken. That's why anomalies are so dangerous. The web shows Mumbatton. Inspector Singh runs to save a, a kid from falling rubble and survives because Miles saved him. Inspector Singh's death was a canon event. You weren't supposed to be there and you weren't supposed to save him. We watch Gwen grab Miles before he rescued Singh. That's why Gwen tried to stop you. Thought you were trying to save me. I was I was doing both. And now, Miles, because you changed the story, Peter's dimension is unraveling. Spider SWAT try to contain the quantum breach. If we're lucky, we can stop it. I haven't always been lucky. 
that wasn't me. That was the spot. It's what happens when you break the cannon. How do you know? Because I broke it once myself. We watch an alternate version of Miguel play with his daughter, Gabri. He's killed, saving a woman from a thief. I found another world where I had a family. Where I was happy. At least a version of me was. And that version of myself was killed. So I replaced him. Miguel fills in the empty space left by his counterpart's death, bonding with his daughter, building memories. I thought it was harmless. But I was wrong. Miles is surrounded by an immersive hollow video of a dimension collapsing. No one escapes, including Gabri, who glitches and disappears right out of Miguel's arms. Peter B. was there. He watched this world disintegrate. Isn't that right, Peter? Yeah. You break enough cannon, save enough captains, you can lose everything. Lines of the web snap. Nodes explode in white light. Miles shields his eyes as the whole web shatters into emptiness. Miles is left alone with only his breath in the darkness. And then we're back in Miguel's lab. My dad is about to be captain. Spider sense overwhelms Miles. Spot causing destruction. Rubble raining down. A child in a red shirt running and Jeff rushing to save him. I'm going to take everything from you like you took everything from me. Miles wakes from his recurring vision with a start. What does it? He kills him. When does it happen? No one wants to say it. When does it happen? In two days. When he's sworn in. That's what the model says. I'm sorry, Miles. Send me home. I can't do that. Not now. What am I supposed to do? Just let him die? Miguel stands, unwavering. What about your dad? He's a captain, right? Yeah. That's it. Dark gonna do anything about it. Gwen can't find any words. Okay, what about Uncle Ben? Dad have been okay if you knew and just let it play out? Not for Uncle Ben. Most of us wouldn't be here, Miles. All the Gooby did, it, it wouldn't have been done. So we're just supposed to let people die because some algorithm whoa, whoa. says that's supposed to happen? You realize how messed up that sounds, right? More spider people step into the room. You have a choice between saving one person and saving an entire world. Every world. I can do both. Spider-Man always. Not, Not always. always. Miles. We all want to live the life we wish we had. Believe me, I have tried. And the harder I tried, the more damage I did. You can't have it all, kid. A phalanx of spiders surround Miles more than we realized. Being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. That's the job. That's what you signed up for. Miles' old friend Penny approaches. Miles. Me? What is this? Is this an intervention or something? Looks that way. Spectacular Spider-Man steps up. We know it's hard. But it's the truth, Miles. Is that why you're here? To let me down easy? Worked last time, why not run it back, huh? Miles. You were right. You should have never come to... Oh, I think that's fine. You were right, Gwen. You should never come to see me. Hold on, look, kid. Stop calling me that. Oh, uh, here we go. Toby, you're not helping. Good. You can't ask me not to save my father. I'm not asking. Miguel drops a containment field around Miles, the same kind we've seen caging other anomalies. Miguel, just give him a second, please. I told you he wouldn't listen. Stop it. Miles fruitlessly wails against the cell's energy field. If we let him leave, he'll only do more damage. We both know that. Miguel, that's enough. Oi, little man. Peter Pan. Hobie wiggles his fingers as Miles and Mouth's palms. Just need to hold you for a few days. Sorry. I had to run like this, kid. I said not to call me that. 
As the walls close in around Miles, his rage boils over. He pushes his palms against the containment field and venom blasts it across the room. The shockwave throws Miguel, Peter, everyone on their ass. Hobie gives a little chuckle. <laughs> Miles stares at his palms, stunned by his own power, and then he runs. Miles! The chase is on. All right. I'm sorry for doing this. This is bad parenting. Peter tugs down Mayday's hat, gives her a little kiss, and joins the rest of them in the pursuit. Everyone but Hobie. Just for the record, I quit. He tosses his watch and fucks off through a portal. Peace. Interior, Spidey HQ, same time. Alarms blare. Miguel's hologram comes over the PA system. All stations, drop what you're doing and stop Spider-Man. So many spiders point at one another. You, him, him? My coño. Miles, Miles Morales. He's entering Sector 4. The oblivious Spider-Man 2211 stands under the Sector 4 sign. Do I have a web on my face? What's the deal? Oh, Miles, he's right there. Turn around. 2211 turns, revealing Miles hiding on his back. A hundred spiders look at Miles. He gives a sheepish smile and dives away. Dogpiled by spiders from every direction, Spider Cat launches a web hairball at his face. Can this day get any damn weirder? Well, funny you should ask. P. Terror Patarker? Maybe the peas are silent? A dinosaur, of course. Flips at him with tiny T Rex arms. I guess I can. In the cafeteria, Miles runs on top of the tables, a crowd still chasing him. He steps on someone's spider burger, stumbling forward. At a spider therapist's office, we're in the middle of a therapy session. And, and then I looked at my uncle. And let me guess, he died. Miles and scores of pursuers crash into the room and out to a service tunnel where Miles sees the go-home machine room. His ticket out of here. He makes for it when Pat rides up atop Widow, firing a web six shooter. Patwong! Miles leaps onto Widow facing Pat, a point-blank showdown. On the count of three. Draw. One. Miles webs Pat right out of the saddle. <sighs> You didn't wait for three! Peter, mid-chase, races to get Miguel's attention. Miguel! Miguel! Let's take a photo of this. It's our first chase. <laughs> Miguel swings away, pissed. Peter takes a selfie with Mayday. Back on Miles, riding Widow past the cage anomalies. They cheer Miles and boo Miguel. Sun Spider, a.k.a. Charlotte Weber, rolls up in her wheelchair. Miles? Hi. I'm a huge fan of your work. Thanks. Do you think spider people too often use comedy as a crutch? Uh -huh. Get it? Crutch? He nails him with a crutch, knocking him off the horse, straight into old Spider-Man 67 and his famous fanfare. I can do anything he can. Oh, dang, I pulled something. <laughs> as 67 falls away, Miles dashes into the training room and begins dodging pop-up cutouts of iconic Spider-Man villains like... Hello, Peter. Miles is nearing the exit when Miguel drops from the rafters, cutting him off. Miles is trapped. Spiders closing in on all sides, including... Nowhere to run. Miles turns, runs straight out a hundred-story window. My bad, everybody. There was somewhere to run. Hmm. Outside, Miles free falls over the aspirational futurescape of Nueva York. Miguel, hot on his heels, unfurls cybernetic web wings and leads dozens of spiders in a pursuit. Stop running! Then stop chasing me. Oh, you're so frustrating. Jess rides her bike on a building's edge, meeting Gwen. I know he's your friend, but it's the only way. But my gut says... Then use your head. Peter overhears this and swings off of the plan. Jess, in the meantime, catches up to Miles, slams him with her bike. He falls, but Gwen flips him, saving him, catching him. No difference to Miles. He throws Gwen a defiant look before severing the line only to be immediately collared by Ben Riley. I got you trapped in my well-defined masculature, so don't even bother- Ow! 
Miles rips himself free as they crash through a grate into an industrial tangle of huge pistons, the literal dark underbelly that undergirds Miguel's bullshit utopia. Miles doesn't know where to go, but he doesn't need to. Someone yanks him up into the safety of an alcove. Peter. Miles. No, 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 no. Let me go. This is crazy to run. Brings the least crazy thing going on. Miles looks for a way out. Look, I feel bad. Good. But this is just how this stuff works. You're not going to win here. Miles scrambles past, ignoring him. Do you want to hold my baby? What? Would you give just give my baby one squeeze and then we'll talk? Because I think it's going to change our vibe. No. It's very rejuvenating. I'm plenty rejuvenated. You'll get more so when you do a chest to chest with this magical child. You don't get to have a heartfelt conversation with me right now. Just hold the baby and we'll see what happens. Peter pushes Mayday on Miles. Miles hands her back. You're the reason I had her, okay? Miles stops. It's a dead end. I thought that if I did a decent job raising her, there's a chance she was going to turn out like you. And that got me excited because you're a wonderful person and I like being around you. Then why did you come to see me? Because I couldn't. I wanted to be with you guys so badly, but this thing isn't what I thought it was. Bad things are going to happen. It makes us who we are. But good things happen too, you know? Like you happened. And she happened. Mayday climbs into Miles' arms. He's never held a kid before. Hey, I don't... Listen. And you are so bad at holding a baby. Over Peter's calm. <laughs> we got your location, Peter. Sit tight. We're on the way. Wait, wait, no, 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 you do not have my location. Over! Miles realizes, on Miguel, in route, calling the other spiders. Send everyone. Jess looks Gwen in the eye, and they take off towards Peter, who can't take the disappointment in Miles' gaze. Miles, I, I, I didn't know, I promise you. Please, let's, let's talk about this. Did. Miles webs Peter to the ceiling. Oh. Mayday coups, oblivious. Mm -hmm. Miles then unleashes his eye on a huge grate, blocking his escape. Good talk and verts through a spinning gauntlet of massive flywheels that would, and shortly does, send lesser spiders to the ER. Exterior, Viejo, Nueva York, continuous. Miles rockets into the permanent night of the underground streets of the old city. Gwen and Peter follow as closely as they can. Where does he think he's going? I don't think he planned this out. Jess rides past. If I hadn't said it before, by the way, you're a terrible mentor. She's about to catch Miles with an impossible bike stunt, but oh. Miles is ready. He flips Jess's motorcycle out from under her and grinds it long enough to Weber to a truck. Well, he did just beat you, so I'm not a terrible mentor. Miguel passes them. You're both equally terrible. Does that settle it? In route to pursuing Miles of a vertical highway that breaches the surface and accelerates into the clouds. The hell? Oh, not just a highway. It's a track for a space-bound L train. Stop pretending you know where you're going. Oh, I have a plan. I just haven't told you yet. Miles webs the train as it passes overhead. Miguel leaps at him, but only manages to tear off his day pass, which means Miles immediately resumes glitching, barely able to stay ahead of Miguel. Departing for the moon. That's not good. Snap. The speed breaks Miles' web line. He sticks to the train for dear life as Miguel claws his way after him. What are those claws? Dude, are you sure you're even Spider-Man? Miles slips a web into the wind. They're moving too fast. Are you? Who do you think you are? Really? Miles gathers, closes his eyes, and lets go. My name is Miles Morales. Using gravity to drop him into a crane kick that catches Miguel square in the jaw. I was bitten by a radioactive spider. Miguel laser webs Miles around his waist, but as he draws Miles in, Miles fires a web fastball between the eyes. Pretty sure you're going to rest, jerk. Miles hooks a web to one of the cars, speeding below on the vertical highway. Miguel barrels after him. You don't get it. You're an anomaly. Not if you let me go home. Miguel lunges. Miles elbows him in the mouth and scurries back out into the light atop the train. Everywhere you go, you're an anomaly. You're the original anomaly. What? Miles glitches, underscoring the impact of this news. Miguel claws closer and closer to Miles, barely hanging on. The spider that gave you your powers wasn't from your dimension. 
It was never supposed to bite you. Gwen and Peter emerge a couple cars below. Miguel, don't. Miguel, go easy on him. But Miguel can only see his prey. There's a world out there with no Spider-Man to protect them because they bit you instead. Oh. You're not supposed to be Spider-Man. No, you're lying. I'm Spider-Man. You're a mistake. Miguel craters miles into the train's housing. If you hadn't been bit, your Peter Parker would have lived. Instead, he died saving you. He would have stopped the collider before it even went off. Spot wouldn't exist, and none of this would have happened. And all this time, I have been the only one holding it all together. Get off of me. You don't belong here. You never did. Let me go. Miguel, that's enough. This isn't what we talked about. What? Talked about this? You knew? You all knew? I didn't know how, how to tell you. That's why you never came to see me. Miles, it's for your own good. Who decides that? Not a kid, Gwen. Womp. Miguel shoves Miles into the crumpling metal. That's exactly what you are. You're just a kid who has no idea what he's doing. Miles smiles. Yeah, well, I did lure hundreds of spider people away from your little clubhouse. What? Miguel looks back and sees his whole army climbing the train, just now realizing that he's left Spider Society HQ entirely undefended. I guess he did plan this out. And about to do this. Miles' fingers dig into Miguel's shoulder, absorbing energy from Miguel's suit. Miguel's power mm -hmm. isn't suppressing Miles, it's charging him. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah, I'm going to do my own thing. Palms. He releases all Miguel's energy, including his fear, right back into Miguel. Miguel tumbles ass over a tea kettle into the crowd of spiders below. Miles stands, torn and damaged and strong. Goodbye, Gwen. She looks back at him, proud, ashamed. He lets go. Miles. And makes himself invisible as he dives towards the city. Thought I might do that. So I gotta be a pretty good mentor to pull that off. Miguel, seething, leaps after Miles. Back in the go-home machine room, Marco tries out a few virtual hairstyles. Nope. Nope. No. Uh-uh. That's kind of cute. A noise. Playlist off. Visor down. Margot's POV. She toggles views. Infrared. Thermal. Nada. As unseen behind her, something invisible disturbs some wiring, then activates a console. Initializing go home machine. What? The machine runs a retina scan of a familiar eye. A screen blinks dimensional ID Earth 42. The go home machine lights up. Come on. No, 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 no. Margot divides herself so she can type at multiple monitors as Anya descends from the rafters and sees Miles, visible only to their array of eyes. Lila boops in over Margot's shoulder. What's happening? The machine activated on its own. How is that possible? It isn't. On Miles, as Anya spins a cocoon of light around him. Hurry! How about this? Okay, how about now? No, 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 you're getting in the way. Eventually, the machine's bright light illuminates Miles, desperate to get home. Margot clocks him, but she's not his problem. Miles' spider sense screams as Miguel crashes into the room. Stop him! Now! Man, what does it look like I'm trying to do? Miguel slashes at the walls of light that surround Miles, clawing the energy field apart, an animal in the throes of bloodlust. Peter and Gwen try to snap him out of it. Miguel! Miguel, stop! But Miguel has lost control. Miles drops his invisibility. He almost wants Miguel to see him, no longer afraid. Margot's hand hovers over the console. System reboot, yes slash no. Margot and Miles look at one another, see each other. Margot lowers her hand from the console. They share a nod, a recognition, and Miles pulls down his mask. No! There's nothing Miguel can do. Miles is gone. Miguel mm. boils, hurls the console across the room. Okay, well, it's not the console's fault. All he had to do was listen. Why didn't he listen? Maybe you weren't hard enough on him. Pretty mouthy for a rook. 
Gwen, don't do it. You let him go. Me? You didn't catch him, Gwen. He's in Gwen's face now. There's a crowd of spider people filing in, all feeling pretty conflicted. Okay, let's all just take a breath. Peter, you want to back me up? Well, Miguel, as the father of a daughter and the son of a mother... Yeah, actually, stop talking. Duly noted. Let me just talk to him. We tried that. He's my friend. Yeah, and that's the problem. Do you know for certain what happens if he breaks the cannon? Do you want to find out? I told you she was a liability. Miguel backs Gwen to the end of the platform. One false step and she'll fall into the spooky gap below. You're wrong. Jess, tell him he's wrong. He's not. Are you serious right now? I told you, you let him get away. I can't help you. I'm not coming. You're right. And suddenly, Anya's spidery arms grab Gwen. What the hell? Anya pulls her away into the machine's unyielding grasp. Go home, Gwen. We're supposed to be the good guys. Flash, she's gone. We are. He says it the first time as if to convince himself, and then the second time to convince everyone else. We are. He activates a portal. Jess, Ben, come with me. Hell yeah. And somebody catch the spot. Yeah, Sarah, I gotta get I gotta go get her down for a nap. Not you. I've had the right amount of you. The portal closes behind Miguel, Jess, and Ben. Mayday shares her views. <laughs> Brooklyn. Miles crashes out of portal onto a rainy rooftop, no time to catch his breath, and starts flying, tumbling home. Chelsea, Earth-65, Gwen's World. A portal cannonballs Gwen into a shipping container. Her watch is useless now. Access denied. She's stuck back in the place she's been avoiding this whole time. Boiling over, she throws the huge container down an alley like I once threw a takeout container one horrible night in Southampton. This is about as satisfying, which is to say, not very. Manhattan, Earth-1610, Miles' World. Miguel portals in confidently, flanked by Jess and Ben. Scanning for miles across the rain-soaked skyline. Queens, Earth-616, Peter's World. An interdimensional flash in the window of interior, Peter and MJ's home night. MJ steadies her tea as she crosses the hall to find Peter putting Mayday down. A lot on his mind. Hey, hon. How was work? Uh, I don't know. She buying that? Peter, did you bring our baby to another fight? Did I bring up it? No, because you asked me not to, so I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Let's him off the hook. He drops the act. Do you think I'll be any good at this? You're asking that now? There's no playbook for raising someone like her. Or being someone like you. You just gotta make the right adjustments at halftime. Interior Stacy residence, night. Gwen sneaks into her room via the fire escape. She's not a kid anymore, but this place reminds us that she used to be. She opens her drum. That picture of her and Miles is gone. Back to Peter's dementia. That's a sports metaphor, by the way. Yeah, I understand. Oh, sorry. You were just such a nerd in high school, I figured. But I have watched sports. Unbelievable. Interior Stacy residence, night. Gwen peeks out her door and finds George asleep on the couch. There's a lot she'd rather not have to say that she'd rather not have to hear. So she grabs that picture of her and Miles. It's on the coffee table in front of him and leaves. She's halfway out the window when she senses George behind her holding something. She whips around and webs his weapon to the wall. Only it's not a weapon, is it? It's a stuffed penguin. The one she keeps her police scanner in. Want to go easy on the penguin? She's not laughing. She turns to leave. Are you going to even look at me? She stares at him, petulant, silly almost. What? What is that? I'm looking at you like you asked. George sighs. She takes off her mask. You look skinny. Where have you been? Just been out murdering all my friends. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, okay. Now he turns and leaves. Gwen follows. Now she's trying to keep him from walking out the door. Who's the kid here? Where are you going? I don't know. Maybe they both are. For cracking ice, somebody say something. 
you're a good cop, Dad. You put that badge on because you know if you don't, someone you shouldn't will. But you have to understand, this mask is my badge, and I'm trying to be good too. I was trying so hard to wear this thing the way you'd want, and I, I didn't. He stopped in the doorway, wheels turning. She drops her mask. I can do all these things, but I can't help the people I love the most. And they can only know half of who I am, so I'm completely on my own. I don't even know what the right thing is anymore. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But I know I can't lose one more friend. When I always taught you to do it by the book. Yeah, and how did that work out? I took an oath. Then arrest me, Dad. Get it over with. I can't. Why not? Because I quit. When? About halfway through your big speech. He looks up. Wait a minute. You're not going to be captain. That means... My job, being captain, this whole thing doesn't matter anymore. It's so simple, really. You're the best thing I've ever done. What else do you need? Gwen flips him towards her for a big hug. He embraces Oliver as she digs her face into this big, lovable galoot. It was a good speech, huh? No wonder you got an A in English. I got a B plus. Missed a few classes. George walks over to the bookshelf. I don't know what it is what you got to do, but I think this thing is supposed to help. He holds up a package that is clearly from Hobie. The guy who left it was a real piece of work. Inside is a punky homemade watch and a note. In case it don't work out, Hobie. Gwen fiddles with the watch. Womp, a wild portal overtakes the room. Poor George. I'll be back. Promise. She pulls down her mask and with a big womp, she disappears into the portal. After she's gone. Parenting is a big-ass mystery. Miles, scrambling over rooftops, trying to stay hidden in these unusually dark shadows. So much just happened. He's devastated by everything Miguel just told him. His psyche is shredded as his costume. As he swings, he can barely stay ahead of the monumental voices in his head. You're a mistake. If you hadn't been bit, your Peter Parker would have lived and none of this would have happened. Miles, the hardest thing about this job is you can't always save everybody. I'll make you pay for everything you took away from me. Saving one person and saving an entire world. Every world. I can do both. Spider-Man always. Not always. Whatever you're going to do out there, don't get lost. Bad things are going to happen. I didn't know. I had to tell you. You're not supposed to be Spider-Man. His fears flow out behind him as he runs like hell from his demons, closing in so many demons. Flip. Miles bursts out into the open. Putting aside these pernicious thoughts and focusing on the one voice that matters right now. Just keep going. Miles swings through the rain, defiant, confident, just as honk, Miles is hit by a truck. Exterior Brooklyn rooftop, Earth 1610, night. Miguel's spider sense goes off. He races to the edge of the building and peers into an empty alley. Did you check your location? Split screen with Ben and Jess. Yes, Dad. No sign of him. Lila, send everyone out. Anywhere. Anywhere he might be. Exterior police station, Earth 1610, same. Jeff walks out of the police station. Congrats, Captain. You told me that until I'm sworn in. You know that. We're all proud of you. Jeff gets in the car and drives off. Around the corner, Jess revs up her bike and follows. Exterior Morales' apartment, Earth 1610, same. Ben patrols the roof opposite Miles' bedroom, crouching in his iconic rooftop pose. Perfect pose. <laughs> A strange flash of light in the corner. Huh? Possible disturbance in the alley. Better go check it out. He swings over to an open portal. There is no one in sight, but that doesn't stop him from Ben splaining everything. Now I'm here in the alley. There's something unusual happening. Looking at the walls. Those are normal. But there's something in front of me. Webs hogtie him, rip him off, rip off his watch and sling him onto the portal. Now all that's left in the alleyway is Gwen. She grabs Ben's watch out of the air and crushes it with her bare hand. 
Miles, breathless, slipping, he makes a final desperate swing through the rain, through a window, and into finally his bedroom, where he pulls off his mask and exhales a little smile. Miles? Miles flips the jacket over and zips it over his suit right as Rio walks in. She looks harried, more brusque than usual. Is now a bad time? Am I too late? What did you do to your hair? Are you guys okay? Are you okay? I'm okay. He hugs her so hard. You were right. You were right about everything. Of course I'm right. I'm always right. What am I right about? I saw all these amazing places and met all these amazing people. You did pass to me, huh? Didn't want me. I can think about what you said and let them have it, Mom. I beat them all. I know how strong I am now. I'm strong because of you and Dad. I did. Mom, there's something coming for us. Something terrible. Miles, you're talking crazy. What's going on? His name is Spot. He's my nemesis. And I'm going to stop him. The hell is this kid talking about? I know you know I've been lying to you. It's because I thought if you knew, you wouldn't love me the same. And I went out there, and now I'm not afraid of anything. What do you want to tell me? You got to promise nothing's going to change. I will always love you. I don't care what you say. Me entiendes. this. Big breath. Um, Spider Man. He unzips the jacket to reveal his spider suit underneath. He's waited so long to say it, it's almost anticlimactic. Who's Spider Man? Uh. The superhero? Got. Bit by a spider, gave him spider powers. Is this like where you dress up like your favorite character for like what's it called, Comics Con? I don't know what that is. You really had me going there, Spider Man. Imagine. Gwen looks down below to see Jeff pulling up to the street below. He gets out of the police car, Miles. Why don't you have eight arms? Do you push silk out of your colito? I had a nightmare about that once, but no. Are you sure you woke up? Gwen opens the window to Miles' room and climbs onto the ceiling. The room is empty. The rain has stopped. Miles, wherever he is, it's still raining. He follows Rio into the hallway. There's a gnawing feeling at the back of his head. Something's off. Mom, stop playing around. This is serious. Dad worked with Spider-Man. He didn't realize Spider-Man was me at the time, but I, I wish Dad was here to explain this. Miles, please. I got you to take care of. I got me to take care of. So help me out. Mom, hold on. I need to talk to you. <laughs> Miles glitches. When her spider sense goes off. If it isn't clear by now, Miles isn't here because... He's in the wrong universe. Miles, eyes wide with understanding. A series of flashbacks blaze through his mind. The spider that gave you your powers wasn't from your dimension. Own, writing 42 on a spider's back. 42. 42. Memories of spider 42 biting Miles. It's home dimension. The go-home machine locks onto his dimensional ID, 42. Dimensional signature identified. Miles in the chamber of the go-home machine. Didn't send me home. A doorknob rustling, the door opens, and in walks Uncle Aaron, one version of him anyway, alive as hell. Mane Aaron. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You took your braids out on purpose? No. No? What? It's just it's just hey. Oh, oh hey, no, that's what I meant. That's what I said. Hey, oh I skipped it. Oh hey. 
Yeah. Welcome to Earth 42. Aaron holds out a handshake, but Miles pulls him in tight. Whoa, okay. Okay, all right then. I missed you so much. Whoa! You took out your bra- you- You took your braids out on purpose! Uh, I'm still getting used to it. Aaron hands Rio an envelope of cash. They gave me more hours at the hospital, so next month I swear I'll pay you back. Stop, stop, stop. Come on, we're family. Uh, on Earth 1610, Gwen overhears Jeff walk through the front door. Hey, hon. How you doing? Jeff? Hey, how, how'd it go with Miles? Well, you know how you grounded him? I ungrounded him. You what? A little. I mean, how much trouble can I get into? A lot of trouble. On Earth 42, Rio puts a grocery list on Miles' forehead. Oh, Miles, I have to work an overnight tonight. Here's the grocery list. Aaron takes the post-it off Miles and leads him out. I'll make sure he gets these done. All right, we gotta roll. Miles trails Aaron out the front door and up the stairwell. Security switches out at six. That's the window, right? Right. Uh, yeah, I'm following you and what you are saying. Miles glitches. Aaron looks back as Miles recovers. You all right? I have a cold. Aaron pushes through the emergency exit and onto the rooftop, the same one the party was on, but it doesn't look like anyone's had a party up here ever. Hey, you sure you got the plan? Uh, yeah. But maybe we should go over it one more time just to make sure there's no problem. Miles peers out of the skyline. It's totally unfamiliar, full of shanties and shuttered buildings, sirens, fires, police helicopters with their roving spotlights. There's no Spider-Man here. Miles stops, taken aback by a mural. In his world, it was a memorial he painted of Aaron, but here, it's a memorial to Captain Jeff Morales, husband, hero, father, rest in power. Aaron clocks Miles' shock, but a text message distracts him. He reads it, eyes narrowing, then turns his gaze to Miles. Miles' spider sense goes haywire as a masked figure flies at him and cold cocks him against the gritty tar paper roof. Earth 1610. Gwen's spider sense is on fire, reacting somehow to Miles's. Rio and Jeff just outside the door. Sorry, baby, but you did unilaterally unground him. Yeah, tranquil. I just worry about him getting mixed up with the wrong people. Out in the living room. It's, it's probably that girl. What? What? What, what is he even being? What is he even thinking being with her? I have some ideas. Maybe you're not really helping. I saw the way he lit up around her. I just hope she doesn't get him hurt. Gwen winces. I mean, am I responsible for this? Maybe maybe it's all my fault. Come on, Baba. You're a great dad. This is hard. This is hard. We got a whole new kid who just wants to grow up so fast, and maybe we got to grow up, too. A little bit. Maybe we just got to let him spread his wings, man. Jeff stretches his arms out. He looks as silly as Miles did. Man? It's not your fault. Gwen faces them. Miles' is empty room behind her. It's mine. Come on. What the heck are you doing here? Oh, his window was open, so I came in because that's normal to do. I want to talk to your parents. Right. My dad's kind of hard to get on the horn. Oh, really? What does he do? Deal drugs? He's a cop. Statement withdrawn. I'm going to call the station. I don't think he's there or anywhere around here. Well, that's his jacket. It's his jacket. Where's Miles? I don't know. You don't know? What do you mean you don't know? 
Yeah, I'll leave. Where do you think you're going, young lady? I'm going to find him. On Jess, watching Gwen on her watch from the street below. I don't know where exactly, but I don't know where to start. Back upstairs, Rio and Jeff hang on Gwen's words. One thing I learned from Miles is it's all possible. She loves the right things about him, at least. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. I've seen it. She has. They know it. If you do find him, tell him five months. And tell him we love him. Yeah. On the roof, moments later, Gwen boots up Hobie's makeshift watch. Destination E616B. Jess watches from below as Gwen portals away. Interior Aaron's apartment, Earth 42, night. Eyes open, glimpses, lucky cat, a motorcycle, prowler tech. Miles is tied to a heavy bag like Peter once was. It's for Aaron. Miles glitches. Nearby, Aaron activates a winch, lifting Miles off of the ground. He tries a venom strike, but his hands are covered in rubber kitchen gloves. Miles is helpless as Aaron closes on him. You don't understand. I'm not from here. The machine sent me here by the mistake. Wait, Uncle Aaron. Aaron walks past the bag and puts on a record. Uncle Aaron, just hear me out. Nope. He pushes up the faders louder. I was bit by a spider that gave me powers. It wasn't supposed to bite me. It was supposed to bite someone else. Someone from here. I don't belong here. I need to go home. Or my dad, your brother, is going to die. I have an Uncle Aaron, too. I had one. He was a bad guy called the Prowler. He looked out for me. Did a lot of bad things, but I knew he wanted to be good. He just didn't know he had a choice. But you do. You can be a good guy. A good guy. Please trust me. I know you don't want to be the Prowler. Aaron levels the punching bag with Prowler's gauntlet. Miles swings back into frame, shaken but unhurt. I'm not. Aaron turns Miles to face a figure in the rafters. A digital mask flickers to life, and the Prowler drops to the floor. Aaron tosses the gauntlet. The Prowler catches it, puts it on in stride. Your dad is still alive. What? Your father. He said he's still alive. Yeah. Oh. Who are you? He unmasks. Meet the hardened, braided Miles G. Morales of Earth 42. I'm Miles Morales. But you? You can call me the Prowler. If I don't get home, our dad is going to die. Your dad. Please, you have to let me go. Why would I do that? As he rests his glove against Miles' face, Rio and Jeff worry at a window, a dark cloud forming. Spot returns to Earth 1610 rising from the collider wreckage, pulsing with untold power. Peter dozes under a book every parent should read, How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk. He snorts awake to find Mayday bouncing and pointing outside at Gwen, vibrating in front of a punk portal. Peter smiles. Don't tell mom. Mayday pulls down her little spider mask. I never found the right band to join, so I started my own. A team folds in, Pavitar, Hobie, Margo, Penny, Ham, Noir. With a few old friends. They leap into an open punk portal, off to find Miles, who tears a hole in the finger of that rubber glove, a spark. Gwen looks right at us. You want in? And takes the leap. And that 
is uh, part two of the Spider-Verse series. Thank you all so much for uh, for joining us on this one. It was wild to see how this one turned out, and I cannot wait for part three. So for real, we know that there's burn to a reading of part three, even if we stop doing these well before. Then we're doing part three. Call it out here and now. So <laughs> we'll see you as we return. Who the hell knows when for Beyond the Spider-Verse. Have a good night, everybody. Ha, <laughs> ha,